थ्री टू वन मेयर लाइव गुड मॉर्निंग फ्रेंड्स वी हैव अ वंडरफुल स्पाइन सिंपोजियम ऑर्गेनाइज टूडे एंड वी हैव विथ अस प्रेसिडेंट ऑफ महाराष्ट्र ऑर्थोपेडिक एसोसिएशन डॉक्टर गाड़ेगोणे देन सेक्रेटरी डॉक्टर करने सर सो आई वेलकम यू ऑल फॉर दिस वंडरफुल सिंपोजियम माई सेल्फ एंड डॉक्टर संगीत गवाड़े वी आर देयर टू कोऑर्डिनेट द इवेंट एंड धीरज वुड बी कन्वीनर एंड ही विल बी टेकिंग अस थ्रू द होल प्रोग्राम सो मे आई इन्वाइट डॉक्टर गाड़ेगोणे फॉर हिज कमेंट्स ऑन दिस प्रोग्राम गुड मॉर्निंग to all members of maharashtra orthopedic association and viewers of arthro tv this is our the master class is being held here on spine and trauma and this will be a second episode will be in the next month on the degenerative spine and it is our endeavor to educate younger generation of the orthopedic surgeons regarding the basics of the spinal trauma and in the next webinar we will be having on a degenerative spine i now request my our maharashtra orthopedic association secretary dr narayan karne to introduce in brief all faculties those who are devoting their valuable time for the cause of educational cause of maharashtra orthopedic association and also thank dr chandak as well as dr sangeet gawale and arthro tv for giving their valuable time here on a sunday morning thank you very much karne sir over to karne <coughs> you are muted karne sir uh, thank you honorable president uh, on behalf of maharashtra orthopedic association i welcome all uh, um, all members of the as well as all the viewers of this uh, wonderful program uh, spine is a generally a territory where the uh, general orthopedic surgeon little bit scared to go off rather it is a not uh, much a sort specialty by the orthopedic surgeons because of the many reasons uh, they will go for arthroplasty arthroscopy and the other uh, even uh, for foot ankle also but uh, for the spine because spine is a, uh, such a area where it is a very sensitive you know a slight mistake here and there and patient can disable forever his life uh, but in our private practice and in our general uh, in our practice we do get the many spine patients and uh, uh, the all ortho all surgeons orthopedic surgeons they start as a trauma surgeon so spinal trauma is one which we come across uh, many times uh, even in the peripheral practice also and i thank uh, our uh, panelist dr chandak dr gavale and uh, our ec member dr kiran sauji as well as the convener dr shailesh hadgavkar and uh, um, uh, um, sonavani dr sonavani for arranging this extremely important program of the cervical and thoracic lumbar fractures as well as uh, its classification and we have got the masters for this particular program who will help us uh, for um, uh, knowing everything uh, on behalf of uh, this maharashtra orthopedic association i welcome dr mihir bapat uh, uh, dr himanshu kulkarni dr kalkotwar uh, for their uh, presentation and i thank uh, as usual for a uh, strong backbone of all our webinars uh, dr ashok sham as well as dr bijlani and ortho tv for this thank you very much और तो सुनावने सुनावने सर सर आई थैंक थैंक यू सर थैंक यू गाड़ी गोने सर थैंक यू करने सर आई वेलकम ऑल द स्ट्रीम फैकल्टीज एंड एम ओ टीम मेंबर्स ओवर टू शैलेश शैलेश क्या यू कैन टेक अहेड दिस थैंक यू ऑल टीम महाराष्ट्र ऑर्थोपेडिक एसोसिएशन डॉक्टर गाड़ी गोने सर डॉक्टर करने सर डॉक्टर संगीत गवाड़े सर Dr. Chandak sir and uh, all the team uh, MOA for this wonderful academic uh, meetings on Sunday. And today we have a stellar faculty. We have Dr. Mihir uh, Bapat from Mumbai who will be talking us uh, on various aspects of spinal trauma. We have my co-convener and moderator Dr. Diras Sonam who is uh, in Mumbai and uh, he will be talking and discussing. various cases about thoracolumbar spine we have dr samir kalkotwar an eminent spine surgeon from nagpur who will be discussing and uh, uh, having uh, interesting cases in cervical spines with us we have dr uh, himanshu kulkarni from sangli kolapur region uh, who is uh, 
going to talk about interesting cases in thoracolumbar spine which is most important for all of us and uh, myself shailesh hotkar i'll be sh showing some interesting pediatric spine cases and uh, this is the interactive uh, session where we will be having a lot of dialogues and debates in various things which is going to be useful for all of us and uh, i am sure this is, this is going to be a, a interesting endeavor uh, i am hoping for uh, there is some technical glitch uh, of dr mihir bapat's presentation we are waiting for that to get uh, online but in the meantime i will start with some interesting uh, cases uh, to begin with um yeah uh, dr bijlani uh, are you checking dr mihir's uh, presentation yes uh, i think i have sent it to chandak sir yeah he has sent to me i am just downloading it and a couple okay. of minutes i think it could be there yeah yeah in the meantime we will uh, start uh, one of the interesting uh, case this is a 24 year old <laughs> housewife sustained a high velocity motor vehicle accident her admitted her uh, vitals were stable gcs was 15 by 15 she had multiple facial clws on imaging she had a type 2 odontoid fracture this is her x ray she had right proximal humerus fracture she had a closed shaft left humerus fracture she had a fracture head and middle one third of right femur with posterior hip dislocation and posterior wall of acetabulum and the, uh, though the head injury was there there was no uh, um, major uh, neuro deficit she was 15 by 15 i would like to ask mihir what will be your algorithm when you see such a patient in the casualty and you are getting a call mihir no i think i think uh, you are just a part of the whole gamut now this patient has lost a lot of blood is uh, sort of medically unstable because of so many injuries and uh, first and priority is that you secure the patient vitally the patient has to be monitored in an icu because there are a lot of chances of uh, uh, sort of an embolism and cardiac arrest and uh, uh, acute renal failure so a lot of these problems can exist along with the polytrauma so once you have secured the patient then you have to discuss with your orthopedic colleagues as to what is their plan of the extremity management and at this point in time uh, i would say that the other fractures have a little more priority over the odontoid and odontoid is more for stabilization and the fracture dislocations are actually of more importance yes as as we know the master of trauma we have dr sangeet gawale uh, from mumbai uh, with us uh, sir how will you uh, see when such patient comes to you so i think uh, meer the priority is other fractures the peripheral fractures you said Absolutely. but but how can we give anesthesia i mean it's so unstable no actually anesthesia is uh, even with an uh, type 2 odontoid with a brace it is fairly secure but i am not saying that the odontoid does not require treatment it is that the you, you need to formulate a plan that plan cannot be odontoid first it's a plan where step by step you have to plan how many fractures you can fix at one time mm. what is good for this patient from the mm. medical point of view and how do you stage his surgeries so odontoid will certainly be one of the first surgeries but it not it may not be the only priority for this patient right now as uh, dr gawale has said it's very important for anesthesia how will you give anesthesia and uh, i would like to ask dr chantak what will be his approach in nagpur <laughs> so i would ask the critical care expert with me to stabilize the patient put him uh, onto a suitable life support system the priority for me for this patient from orthopedic point of view would be his hip uh, reduction once that is done after a cervical spine is taken care of and then stabilization of other injuries this is how i would like to progress how many stages you would like to do this case sir so it would be um, damage control orthopedics on stage 1 and then appropriate fixations dco you want to say dco yes yes this is a type 2 this is unstable odontoid this has to be fixed this is, there is no uh, ifs and buts it has to be fixed so this is one 
I would like to ask uh, Dr. Sona on it. Shailesh, Shailesh, can yes. I intervene? A type 2 odontoid has to be fixed because there are chances of a non-union. Correct. If you're talking about acute neurological deficits, you can have an uh, sort of a controlled intubation even in these patients. Yes. And the chances of neurological deficits are minimal. Correct. So let's not put neurology as the reason mm -hmm. for has to be fixed. Correct. To be fixed because there are chances of non-union. Correct. But if at all, this yeah. is the only one which needs to be fixed. Yes. <laughs> if you yeah. say type 2 odontoid, in <clears throat> this particular case, the transverse ligament is still adhering your odontoid to your C1 arch. The, the, the transverse ligament is not fractured. So when you extend this patient, the odontoid is going to get... <clears throat> It is uh, going to be a stable reduction in extension. Okay. Shailesh, for a, yes. from a general point of view, yes. Uh, how unstable is it if they extend for intubation? What can happen? Because they also are scared. A fiber to... optic intubation. Fiber not... optic, exactly, sir. For fiber optic, you don't need any extension. For such fractures, anything. you can just intubate very easily. You can and they routinely do that for rodent right fractures. Even with unstable uh, cranial cervical junctions with a fiber optic, you can still intubate. Yeah. Yeah, sir, 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 also, also want to add. I also want to add regarding the intubation. Uh, I think it's uh, extremely overrated uh, uh, intubation causing spinal cord injury. Exactly. Everyone, everyone <laughs> has seen it's ex not even one in our career of uh, more than ten years. So yeah. I think anesthetists are overthinking on that. This is our very low uh, velocity uh, 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 injuries uh, movement, which is happening at the uh, uh, unstable fracture level. So I don't think it will cause any uh, 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 cord injury further. Let's have so some words of wisdom yeah. from Gadegone, yeah. sir. So you mean to say, uh, 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 you mean to say, uh, for intubation there should not be a problem, even if the patient sits for an epidural or a spinal. No, sir. I am not taking totally uh, telling yeah. that. Yeah. I think uh, with a gentle hand uh, uh, or with the help of fiber optic, if, if possible, we should uh, intubate this patient. But usually, it's extremely rare to cause uh, uh, if they uh, unless they use extreme forces. To intubate this patient, oh. it is extremely rare to cause uh, uh, intubation. Yes. Inter so you should be safe, but intubation yes. should yes. not be your criteria to get fear. So <clears throat> no, to answer Sangeet's question, uh, to answer Sangeet's question, this patient can be put in a Philadelphia collar and made to sit for a spinal yeah. as well. Yeah. So, so oh. actually, the, with the sir, yes, sir. With, <clears throat> the, with the advance in the regional anesthesia, we need not patient to yeah. sit there. You can have a unilateral spinal block and femoral block. What is more priority here is the hip joint dislocation reduction. And that can be very easily done by a, a regional anesthesia. And for a humorous immobilization, no need of anesthesia. It's because if you give a hanging cast for some time, it does not matter very much for a humorous fracture. So we are more concerned about the hip dislocation and fracture shaft. Once that is stabilized by regional anesthesia, then in the second sitting, it is possibly we can uh, move for a definitive surgery, second for the odontite fracture, and then we can go for the fracture shafts of the femur and for this. Yeah, I, I, I believe I believe that once you have a team, this would probably be the plan because mo the most low velocity trauma is the C2. The most high velocity and the destructive trauma is the femur and the hip. So that is affecting the patient more in this particular case. So that should be our priority yes. by regional anesthesia. Yes. Yes. Uh, any other opinions? Uh, uh, Shailesh, uh, I, yes. I uh, just to uh, I, I won't mind to tackle the spine first. First thing, what uh, to make the cervical spine, <coughs> but it also to help me uh, uh, early mobilization and uh, make him uh, yes. sit uh, comfortably. So yeah. spine first is also not a uh, uh, bad uh, completely no no for me. I yes, I, I as a spine surgeon. Instead, I would prefer to go with spine first. Okay. Uh, uh, maybe with a, a percutaneous, uh, with a small incision and odontoid. Right okay. Support. Got and it. And then I would like to mobilize the patient Perfect. comfortably uh, uh, with other joint fixing. Yeah. Yes, Karane, sir. Well, uh, now uh, for the first thing, which is uh, there is a hip dislocation because it is the most painful procedure, most, most painful uh, situation, and it requires emergency. But then after I give more importance to the odontoid fracture because uh, it can lead to a life threatening situation. The cord edema or something develops there. So all other things can be managed later on with a simple sprint. Initial can be given simple sprintage. So hip dislocation in the same setting, if at the earliest possible with the help of the uh, spine surgeon, then we'll tackle the odontoid first. 
and with as you said the uh, uh, anesthesia and uh, i think endoscopic anesthesia yeah okay perfect thank you sir i think the spine surgeons are more concerned about the trauma and embolism and the orthopedic surgeons are more concerned about the cervical spine injury it's a balance which we have to have uh, let's hear from uh, samir and then we proceed samir and himanshu quick words well uh, dheeraj has concluded in one line that it requires percutaneous screw so okay. we can discuss the hip now <laughs> okay <laughs> agree yeah yes samir i mean yep um i mean the only difference of opinion would be uh, the spine as far as spine is concerned it can it can have a laid back approach i mean i am not worried even if it uh, waits for 7 days 5 days and uh, the other fractures uh, are taken care of maybe 24 48 hours just to see whether we are landing up with some fat embolism or some other problems because of stabilization of this fractures and uh, as a laid back and as a delayed procedure uh, we can handle spine maybe after 7 days or so once all the acute things are sorted out that's okay. that's the way I, i i would rather like to formulate rather than any, rushing any, in and doing any spine. any different opinion himanshu uh, yeah different opinion for my setup i would like to stage it and femur and hip would be uh, option 1 and then give ga and odontoid and humerus in stage 2 if i am fortunate like to have a huge team and fantastic team like sancheti you can do it in all one go also i think okay so if there okay. are two trauma surgeons and one spine surgeon they can do it you can just give ga you can reduce the uh, hip you can do femur and uh, odontoid and humerus in same setting but i for a small setup i would go for hip first and then uh, odontoid and humerus for second once i give yeah, ga yeah perfect okay we'll go to the next well, uh, sls one question yes so sir suppose in the contrary if this patient would have been having a neurological deficit so what would you be your preference sir if there is a neurological deficit then definitely i will consider the neurology to be addressed first and spine i will definitely consider first in that situation when there is no neurology we have couple of cases like this where we have done everything in one go and we have published also this this is uh, the damage control orthopedic spine uh, and i just would like to go ahead uh, with what we did in this particular case and it's as everyone has rightly pointed out it's a team approach uh, you can uh, definitely do uh, shailesh one second yes uh, sir gadi gone sir dr kiran sau ji has joined please welcome him ah uh, i welcome dr kiran sau ji executive member of our maharashtra orthopedic association he is a senior member and professor at the jawarlal nehru medical college saungi megewarda welcome sir welcome thank sir. you thank you very much thank you <clears throat> welcome sir uh, sir your opinion saudi sir no he has joined just uh, okay okay. okay no no i have listen i have listen um hello yes sir yes if sir. there is the new, neuro deficit spine should be tackled first okay and uh, shailesh the same extension of that or if the patient deteriorates uh, after he is received in the casualty the treatment would be uh, the same the priority would be the odontoid yes if the patient worsens then we'll definitely try to decompress if at all if there is odontoid or any other injury to the spine and the cause of the worsening should be seen first if it is a embolism yeah, yeah. then we should tackle that part first but yeah. if it is not embolism and uh, everything else then take second seat and uh, but the odontoid from orthopedic point of view we are more concerned with odontoid but if the neuro uh, physician or the even spinal surgeon are saying neuro odontoid can be taken later on if there is no such emergency then we can go for the dislocation okay, worsening yeah, now, now, sir you meant worsening of physical condition or yes. worsening of neurology neurology and yeah, second okay. thing uh, we don't have a ct in the same center or a mri in the same center yeah so how safe is it to shift the patient or is it required to do a ct or mri in sir, such situation so nowadays they say in such situation yeah can i answer this yes, uh, in, this, in this situation nowadays they are doing a whole body ct and that's a new protocol for multi level polytrauma cases including spine where you screen everything and you don't miss yes. anything Yes, that's very good. That's ex- extremely good because it's very likely to miss uh, any fractures, and it's yeah. not very uncommon to miss uh, such yeah. fractures yeah. in such a polyphobic. My question right? was: 
my question was if the center doesn't have a ct or mri okay you have to shift it to some other center okay so your treatment would be based only on the x ray or you would uh, take or you would advise to do a ct or mri before you uh, go ahead with the surgery of the odontoid sir i think it is uh, yes it is it, it, it is difficult at times when there is no ct or mri available and you have only x ray but it is advocable to do the either ct or mri wherever nearby because so so i can answer in brief so for cervical spine if the neurology is intact and if you don't want to shift the patient uh, uh, we can do without ct as well but if there is a neurology we have to know what yeah. exactly has gone the, uh, gone there wrong so we have to go for a ct and mri uh, hmm. anyway we have to shift the patient sir for yes. for limb trauma if there is no pericardial and the trauma surgeon doesn't need anything it's okay yeah most important is good clinical examination will tell you yes. about what is yes. happening even if there yeah. is no need of ct or mr so thorough clinical evaluation in the casualty is a must yes yes it's a must so let's proceed what we did uh, was the odont all in one go we fix the odontoid we fix the uh, our trauma team fix the uh, humerus fracture the shoulder fracture uh, with the phyllos plate and the hip reduction was done and the interlock nailing was done all in one go trauma teams working together yeah one for lower limb yeah yeah one for lower limb and one for upper limb so first we Super. did the spine <coughs> we stabilized the cervical and because of there can be some movement and you know things like that uh the trauma team took over after this it all took around 4 and 1/2 hours for the surgery all surgery patient was extubated next day superb superb excellent fantastic superb what was uh, shailesh the shailesh you have done a total body ct scan no no we didn't do this is a case which was 5 6 years back virus that time we, okay. we were not doing but okay. nowadays but, we are yeah okay uh, is okay. his presentation is ready sir it's still downloading Okay, uh, Silas, I beg to differ with your approach. Yes, sir. Because it is in your very star uh, environment, you have operated this mm -hmm. case with multi-speciality experts are available. Yes, sir. But to me, it is saying that the patient's priority of general condition is very, very more important. For four hour, half hour anesthesia and a surgical trauma may not be sustained by the patient in an average orthopedic session. Therefore. Yes. the message should go that it should be a state protocol is better than a single it's a heroic surgery i no doubt about it but it is only reserved for a very um, uh, multi speciality and everything is advanced uh, and yes, there sir. is a facility for the icu yes patient. sir point noted it's 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 a important thing we should always stage if we are not having a team uh, that will be always better for the patient uh and if you have a good team then only we can uh, consider doing uh, sir odontoid uh, doesn't take much time it took around uh, an hour 45 minutes to 50 minutes no bleeding therefore in the same anesthesia we could manage to do this uh, uh, really, really, yeah. really, a, question, a question for you in a different way yes if you have a multiple trauma the risk of abnormal <laughs> the risk of dvt is directly proportional to the number of fractures that you have correct now is it is it a protocol that you operate all these fractures in one stage or is it preferable to orthopedic surgeons to operate it at different stages because of the medical comorbidities that are attached it's not a protocol at all it's a case based where it is easily feasible then only we venture into otherwise we always stage it in the best of yeah Rather, the message has to be it has to be already staged one, as the patient is already having poly trauma and the chances Correct. of the embolism are far Correct. more. Correct. So Correct. this can be done in a setup where there is everything is the best possible one, but that is yes, a, yes. that is a that is exception rather than the rule. Yes, the rule yes. should be it should be in a staged procedure. Yes, no, we I kept this case after all the presentation, but because okay. of this. Shailesh, being a spine, this, this case is a we can take it as a this also can be done if you have got all the. This also can be done. Yeah. Yes. And uh, Gawai sir want to say something. Yes, sir. Chailesh, uh, being a spine symposium, can you give details on how you did it? Uh, how was the fixation, reduction, position? Something about uh, odontoid. Yeah, odontoid. Yes, sir. Uh, in odontoid, uh, go back to the X-ray. You can go back to the X-ray. Yeah. 
uh, in this uh, most important is putting the patient into the gardner well stongs and uh, now we can have two c arms uh, for ap and lateral we have to keep the mouth open when you are planning to fix the odontoid because there you can get a open mouth view of the odontoid peg when you are putting the k wire and you have a drill set which is very specific for this whenever you are keeping this you always try to keep it slightly in extension if you want but neutral is the best and you need to maneuver at times because this peg can be you know it it is not very stable at times second thing uh, important is if you do not have a good assistance you really can have a problem exposure is always at c4 5 level you always go below not at c2 level so that your angulation comes ab absolutely correct this is one thing ki exposure is always at c4 5 and do expose go upwards and then your drill bit sits there to check it in ap and lateral and the gardner wells you can keep some amount of traction if you get a good reduction your guide wire will go uh, at uh, the junction of the fracture you have to be very careful when you are uh, going with the drill bit because sometimes it can displace you have to be very careful and slow at that minute once you enter into the small fragment then it becomes easy and then you can maneuver with your consecutive ones and this is a locking screw this is a, a locking screw yeah mihir how do you control the uh, small fragment of the odontoid you know Uh, how do you reduce it actually no i think the reduction is pretty much uh, by position and uh, uh, really there is no control on that fragment uh, it has to be a perfectly reduced lock fragment and you have to drill with a smooth k wire and you have to sort of follow the typical um, uh, over drill um, the proximal fragment under drill the distal fragment and put a locking screw across it so that you get a big hold on that distal fragment now really lot of things can go wrong in this and you have to be perfectly selective this was an excellent case for an osteosynthesis but otherwise most of the type 2s are not suitable for this dheeraj anything else you want to add uh, shailesh you can add uh, to the contraindication for this screw in type 2 sorry dheeraj sorry say it again contra contra indication for this screw in type 2 fracture regarding the fracture pattern you want to add something yeah if 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 it, if it is a, a significant displacement then probably it's not a good idea to uh, uh, go for a anterior screw then i will prefer a posterior uh, fixation yeah it is about the reverse oblique also if it's yes, a reverse yes, oblique yes. fracture then yeah. it is a contra indication for percutaneous fixation yes, so you have to go yes. posterior and fix it so on tightening this lag screw the the, the proximal it fragment will slide down poke, yes, slide. it might poke the cord yeah yeah uh, are we ready with uh, dr mehir's presentation so last question before mehir uh, switch switches over the screen uh, do you require open reduction in any of the cases or always it comes by close reduction so so far it is always comes comes by close reduction so, so always close in a fresh fracture sir yeah in a fresh fracture yeah okay so i have a last question whether this injury can be managed conservatively if there is no polytrauma here and there good question sir tight fracture yes sir it is possible sir if she is a young patient new neurology intact type 2 fracture can definitely conserve uh, and best thing to conserve is a hello waist uh, brace sir okay thank you sir uh, please stop your uh, presentation yeah yes i'll be sharing the screen and we are going ahead with uh, dr mehir's uh, presentation on rationale of classification in spine injury spine trauma over to you mehir yeah uh, so why do you need classification sir uh, sir you'll have to just keep going to the next slides yeah yeah i'll do that no problem i think this is the only way it plays i guess it doesn't become a full screen i don't know it should should uh, so where should i click because your uh, presentation i am not used to no this is uh, this is shared i don't know uh, you must be having a full screen option somewhere i'm just trying to see that sir in this view slide show sir just uh, next to your photo there is a share and there is a slide show you can try that sir yeah i'm just uh, yeah. just next to your photo. yeah, yeah. Uh, yes slide show yes Yeah. 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 So, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Perfect. So, uh, 
uh, I hope you can hear me now, guys. Exactly. <laughs> So finally, why do you need to classify? Now, this was an excellent case which Shailesh presented. You have a case scenario and you need to plan a solution. So you need to have some sort of a guideline as to where you can find an answer to your problem. So you need to compare your results with other people and at the same time form protocols if similar cases come in the future. Can I have the fallacies are that there are too many variations. The fracture patterns are too many and everyone wants to have their own classifications. So there are too many interpretations of the same fracture and there are just too many modifications of each classification. So each, each classification becomes very, very difficult to remember. Now, if we just simplify this, now I have just made this myself. So I hope I can simplify this. The spinal columns are only three, anterior, middle and posterior. The anterior column is one big chunk of cancellous bone with the disc. So it is basically to provide movements and structural integrity. So if the anterior column fails, basically your cord should remain intact. So that's, that's how the wedge compression fractures would behave. Next slide, please. However, as the wedge compression fractures increase in their uh, intensity or magnitude and the anterior column keeps collapsing, it is going to stress your middle and posterior columns as a secondary effect. So the problems in higher degrees of anterior column injuries are that there is a malalignment, there is a deformity, there is always a chance of non-union and there are secondary neurological concerns. Next slide. So the middle column is what we all discuss. Middle column comprises of the posterior body wall, the pedicle and the facets. Now this is the thickest part of your spine. It is called as the force nucleus. And it is nature created to protect your spinal cord. Next. So whenever there is a middle column failure, there is a retropulsion of your bone with the disc complex, which goes towards the spinal cord and starts compromising the neurological structures. The pedicles are fractured at the base. So the anterior column separates from the middle and the posterior column. However, the degree of retropulsion does not correlate with the severity of the deficit. And also we know that once we clear the retropulsion, the chances of improvement are also guarded. Next slide. When we come to failure of your facets and your posterior elements, that's actually the death of your spinal stability. The middle and the posterior columns fail and the whole column starts translating and rotating. This is not a simple injury as Shailesh's cases also pointed out that you may have other injuries, you may have aortic injuries, you may have GI injuries, you may have lung injuries, extensive muscle degloving and penetrating wounds, which are actually problems when you treat these fractures. Next slide. So when you analyze any fracture, you have to understand that there are two moving forces. One is that the body is moving. And the force is also moving. A typical is a vehicular de deacceleration injury. So the body is continuously moving and the force is also changing. So you may have different fractures in different patterns in the same patient. And there may be different multiple fracture lines. Now, this is a typical example of that. There is an L1 burst fracture with a posterior body wall buckling. And at the same time, a wedge compression fracture in the same patient. So this is how the fracture patterns are. Now, AO has been a wonderful group trying to get together all the fracture patterns and get to uh, put them in one basket and trying to form an algorithm. But really for an orthopedic surgeon to look at this and make an algorithm is extremely difficult. This is for, you know, people who like AO. Then next slide. The simplistic way to look at fractures is to analyze the anterior, middle and posterior column. So you have a compression fracture, you have a burst fracture, you have a distraction fracture, you have a translation fracture, as I have showed in the diagrams. The posterior ligamentous, no, let me complete the previous slide. The posterior ligamentous, no, sorry. The posterior ligamentous complex is extremely important to maintain the structural integrity. And the most important thing in our last debate was the neurology. The neurology has to be a part of your treatment in any spinal cord trauma. Next. 
So if you see this particular person, the X-ray looks like a wage compression fracture. The CT sky, uh, CT scan shows a very big retropulsion. So the X-rays can be deceptive. This answers our question: Should we treat patients on the basis of X-rays? I would say no. Uh, the X-rays can be very very deceptive. You have to have a CT scan in all patients, and you have to form an algorithm. So. This is a burst fracture with a retropulsion, with an incomplete cord injury, with the posterior elements intact. The total score goes more than six. You have to operate this patient. Next. Now, this is again an unstable burst fracture with retropulsion. The posterior elements are intact. There is an incomplete cord equina syndrome. And this patient requires a surgery. Next slide. Now, this is a sort of a stable burst fracture. But if you see the stable burst fracture, though there is no ret retropulsion, has already affected the cord function. And if you want to mobilize this patient early, then you can offer him surgery. Otherwise, these fractures can be treated conservatively. So the score here is five, which is neither conservative nor operative. So you can take your decisions based on your situation. Next. Now, this is a typical high velocity trauma, a burst fracture with posterior integrity failure. There is a cord injury, which is total. Now this patient had lung injuries. This patient was on a ventilator. And the answer was to fix the fracture and mobilize these patients early as we had the same discussion in the first case that Shailesh showed. Next. Now this is a typical high velocity fracture dislocation. There is a translation component. There is a rotation component. There is a cord injury. Luckily for this patient, it was incomplete. So you had to reduce this fracture and fix it as the total score was more than nine. Next slide. So now this is a typical example of a case which you customize to your patients. This is a pilot by profession. Uh, there is a retropulsion which was pressing on his root, causing a quadriceps weakness. And this patient needed to fly. So we had to operate on him rather than opting for a conservative treatment. So the total score was conservative, but you needed to take an operative decision on him. Next slide. Now, this is the other example which I showed you right in the beginning. Now, this is a typical patient from a village of farmer who was willing to take bed rest for about a month, month and a half. He had metatarsal dislocations, which were operated. And the spinal fracture was conserved. Next slide. So when we go to bilateral dislocations, you follow the same principles. If it is a total cord injury, you operate for stability rather than trying to get any neurological improvement so that you can mobilize these patients early. Next slide. Now, these are bifacetal dislocations with intact neurology. Now, this patient only had a deltoid weakness. And his total score obviously would be operative. So, a plan was made to reduce the fracture and to release the C5 nerve and to decompress the uh, nerve to achieve a neurological recovery. Next. Now, this is a typical example of a chance fracture, which is always through and through. And these are not simple burst fractures, which you can conserve in a brace. You need Neer, to stabilize Neer, sir, yeah. Can you go back to first slide, previous slide? I want to ask yeah. this. Suppose why, why the patient was having so much after dislocation and facetal joint dislocation, why okay. he was having a minimum neurological deficit? Yeah, so basically you do have these rare cases where you have neglected perched facets. Now, if you see this, this is called as a perched facet. These facets are perched on top of each other. They are not completely dislocated. So they lock into each other and protect your spinal cord, which has a free space to flow over this. Yeah, and Mihir, I just would like to add, when there is a purge facet, there is a very high kyphosis in actors. If it is a locked one, the kyphosis is reduced. And only disruption, again, it's reasonably stable. But when it is purged, the inferior and superior facet is on the top and it gives an angulation. That is the reason it is showing here complete kyphosis. It is a completely unstable situation. 
Yeah, so yes, yes. It is said that the perch facets actually act as a natural decompression. So just they just give slight place posteriorly so that the neurology is safe. So it yeah. happens very rarely, but it does. Gare Gore sir, your question is excellent, sir. Just want to add, uh, apart from perch facets, there can be some another another scenario uh, also in loptosis. We the patient may have a, a neurology intact. This is great too. Even in loptosis, patient may have an intact neurology. In yeah. that case, the posterior element is separate. Separate from the anterior then. element. Yes, posterior element is completely separate. So it uh, allows the posterior room uh, space uh, for the cord in that case. In that case is also, in spite of dislocation being very severe, the cord is uh, having normal neurology. Cord is intact. Yeah. 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 yeah so uh, uh, next slide, we went through this. <clears throat> So uh, I think classifications are a guide to a rational mind. It is not that you have to follow one rigid principle. There are certain variations which are common and you have to customize your treatment to each fracture. The fun is always to analyze each trauma and try to get the best results out of your own mind. Thank you. Can I go to the next slide? Yes. You want me to show a case, a very uh, simple a uh, message that goes through orthopedic surgeons yeah please go ahead may quickly rapid fire we can go for next presentation is by dr samir kalkotwar on cervical spine case based discussions no that's okay then samir can take over it's okay yeah. i think the presentation no, no, you can show it may you can show the yes, case sir you can show your interesting case. I, I'll okay, show it and then we go ahead i'll i'll retrieve it by the time you can start the next presentation no, we were, we were talking only about fractures and the way we can reduce them and we can, we can fix yeah, them. Sure and so, Mayor, can it, yeah. Mayor, Mayor, I want to ask one question. Yes, sir. You are a master in spine surgery. All are master here, there. But actually, there was a compression fracture at the one level. Hmm. But you have given a screw fixation at the poor, poor level. So, what is the rationale behind it? So long fixation or is a fracture of a one single vertebra? Uh, actually, actually, uh, it all depends upon where the fracture is located. If the fracture is at the dorsal lumbar junction or in the low lumbar spine, these are heavily loaded fractures. And normally what we do now is we put percutaneous screws. They are all percutaneous screws, which we can withdraw later and we can lower down your fixation with time. So you give stability, allow the patient to mobilize. It acts as a splint. And then, then you take an assessment after an year as to whether you can back off the implant. So just like uh, radius alna plating, implant removal after uh, one year. Yes. They, I would like to add up to Gadegoni sir's question. Why long? In uh, even character, uh, characteristic injuries, like in angst or in dish, where there is a column fracture, it's safer to fix long segment apart from non uh, 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 junctional uh, levels where also we need to fix long in uh, these kind of angst spots. Okay. May, I, may I have one question? Yes, yes sir. sir. According to the uh, score, one to three non-surgical. It is non-surgical. four is not specific. Uh, four is uh, to be judged by the four is to be judged by the surgeon depending upon the situation. So three to five is for the surgeon to decide. More than five is definitely surgical. Surgical. Yes. Thank you. And it's a very simplistic classification which takes care of all the things that you consider as a surgeon. Neurology, other fractures, everything put together. Yeah. So. Uh, this is a 37-year-old uh, female patient who presented with a burst fracture, catheterized at admission because just for nursing care, the bladder was the bladder was quite normal. I have only put selected images. There was only a selective kind of nerve injury, foot drop. So obviously, uh, you want to operate. So the next step is to do a CT scan to analyze this fracture better. So this is what we have done. Now, if you see the CT, it is showing fractures in the spinous processes above as well. So naturally, the fracture line had gone above, though there is no major structural sort of disruption there. So what I want to highlight is that just doing a surgery is an easy part of the planning. But when you open up these fractures, next slide. When you open up these fractures for, uh, can you play that video? You have extensive, extensive dural lacerations 
you have problems of muscle contusions you have problems of dural loss you have problems of infections you have problems of blood loss and you have to have expert magnifications to isolate your neurological elements so don't land up with these fractures thinking that i'll do a laminectomy and i'll do a fixation they are actually they can really come back and bite you so this was just a message which i wanted to convey with these fractures thank excellent, you sir excellent presentation mihir uh, in view of time we would like to go ahead with dr samir kalpatwar on cervical spine over to you samir thank you shailesh i think okay. mihir has covered everything so nicely we just need to run through now yes better Yeah, we are able to see your screen. You just have to go full screen. Okay, bravo. Yeah, yeah, no problem. We'll take it easy. Yeah. Go so, uh, just let me it. let me go through this uh, first case in the series. Uh, he was a fifty-eight-year-old gentleman who had a fall uh, from the height of uh, Samir. Uh, roughly, yeah. Samir, make it full screen. It is full screen, sir. So we cannot see that. So you can unshare your screen and share it once again because we cannot okay. see your full screen. Okay. Share again. Second. It was showing slideshow icon had come and then you can click on the slideshow. Yeah, it is. I mean, uh, my screen at least it is showing the full screen. So how do I manage this now? So uh, unshare your screen and share unshare. it once again. Okay. share screen yeah just a sec sir yes yeah oh, is it now is it uh, full screen yes. now yes yes yes, yes. perfect perfect so uh oops what happened now it's not running yeah yeah, yeah it's running yeah yeah, yeah it's running. just have to click yeah so uh He was a 58-year-old uh, gentleman who had a, a history of trauma. He fell from the height of uh, roughly 10 feet. That's first floor, um, and uh, he had uh, a complete lower limb deficit, and his uh, small hand functions were uh, also completely involved. There was no power, uh, so C8 onwards he was completely shut off. No medical comorbidities, and when he presented, uh, his vital parameters were within normal limits. so uh, on x rays we can see that he had a c6 or c7 bifacetal subluxation and uh, the scan was showing uh, extensive cord damage or cord involvement so now uh, the score which uh, dr bapat just now discussed he was uh, it was like 9 on the slic score so definitely surgical but uh, before going ahead with surgical management would like to uh, the panel and experts to let us know what should be the uh, what should be the initial management how how to stabilize say this guy came 3 days later so he was already stabilized somewhere he came to me uh, with uh, vitals being stable so a uh, few questions like uh, how many of us would like to give solumetrol or steroids Shailesh, you can take it over, and uh, can you please discuss? Yeah, this? normally uh, nowadays, uh, if the patient is coming so late, normally we do not uh, prefer to give solumetrol for various things like uh, all these trials. We all know uh, that uh, it it's not uh, really of much help in uh, spine injury. At the same time, chances of wound issue also is there. So I personally do not recommend or uh, give solumetrol in such injuries nowadays. uh mehir sir your quick word no i think uh, uh, it's a it's a question of what you believe in um when the patient has come to you 3 days later there is no question of giving any solumetrol because it is of not any benefit anyways so uh, in this particular case i will not if the patient comes to us very very early which is in fact very rare patient does not come to you within 4 yeah. hours so uh, i i really have reservations using solumetrol and extension to that question say hypothetically patient comes to us in 4 hours do you follow the nasis protocol or you follow, just do i don't follow the nasis protocol no that sure. that just answers your question is that we have very 
classical reservations are believing that steroids make a difference. So it's just a single uh, high, high dose uh, uh, steroidal one, shot. That's one, it. Two, one or two grams, one one probably pre-op and one intra-op. That's it. That's it. So, Samir, and, yeah. most of us do not uh, recommend solimedrol. But if we have operated ourselves as spine and he has developed a deficit, is that the scenario where everyone would like to give solimedrol? Again, so, uh, at least I would raise my hand. Yes. Right. So Post-operative, maybe. So that, yeah, yeah. Means, that means you believe in some action of solimedrol? <laughs> it's more for uh, your yeah, mental satisfaction, I feel. No, no, but again, again, to answer that question is that when we have a deficit, we do not follow the NASIS protocol. Yeah. You understand? So that means that you do not give such, in a 90 kilo man, you do not give a NASIS protocol. It will probably have other complications. Okay. So, if I have a neurological deficit, I give one gram of solumetrol again and maybe one gram post-op, but that's it. Perfect. It is not believing on solumetrol, it is believing on your luck. Yeah. Sir, yeah. is it acting? Actually, there is, is it a scientific proof that the solumetrol works in the uh, decreasing the edema or the spinal cord? See, I think yeah. it is the most powerful anti-inflammatory available. And for whatever it is worth, it is it is used, it is probably being used in minimal doses, but NASIS protocols are in the irrational, where they are just too high dose of solumetrol. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 5.6. There are very contrasting trials which have been, it's still going on. There are a lot of trials which support, few trials which don't support. So I have, I'll come to that during yeah. my presentation. Oh, when there is nothing proved yet. When intention, use solumetrol. <laughs> is that the policy? Sir? Um, so, uh, uh, sir, I mean, uh, um, even uh, just uh, the way uh, Dr. Mead said, at least in my practice, sir, if the patient comes within 24 hours, not four hours, 24 hours, I, I tend to give them solumetrol, sir, uh, as a uh, pre-op loading dose. And maybe uh, if I take them within 24 hours, then intra-op loading, I'd, uh, intra uh, another shot I don't give. But if because of some reason I'm not able to take them within 24 hours, then intra one uh, one more dose is repeated. But okay. that's just, sir, anecdotal thing. And that's my protocol, which uh, kind of... I, I tend to follow. Not it it not used to be a downpour of solumetrol some times ago, 8-10 years back. People yeah. used to just pour in solumetrol. But the trials have completely gone against uh, solumetrol and its real efficacy. And uh, now I think there is a very judgmental role of solumetrol in spinal cord injury because whatever happens, it happens at the same time of the injury. Impact and uh, uh, the impact of the injury and the velocity of injury is important for the neurological recovery. It's not that the uh, we are seeing the cord edema and solumetrol will improve. It's not any more true. So I think uh, we have to be rational. A lot of time we don't feel, but the neurologist comes and he starts solumetrol for five days in a tapering dose also. So all these things, still controversy is going on, but we have to be very uh, uh, scientific in uh, using solumetrol nowadays. Okay, perfect. And next question to Dr. Shalish. I know this doesn't happen in your setup. This patient comes and then uh, because of some reason you are not able to operate for 24 hours or 48 hours. How do you immobilize this? No, I think uh, most important, it's a very important uh, case for all of us. Lower cervical injury, C6, C7, C7, T1. Luckily, this guy has a very good neck where you can see the cervical spine. But in 50% of the time, we don't see that. We just see up to C6 and we don't see any dislocation. Important is first identify the uh, 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 level where it is exactly happening, what is the neurologically, uh, how the patient is neurologically. If the patient is reasonably stable, ABC is most important. Uh, get a physician's evaluation, whatever is needed for him, that we can do. If the edema is ascending up, that has to be assessed. MRI is mandatory in this particular case because that will tell us where the edema is going up to what, whether the breathing count is good, we always check how much he can breathe in single breath count. That is what we normally call. If the patient is reasonably okay, we I will prefer to keep a gardener well strong, uh, not uh, too much of weight, but a, a, a sustained weight where it can be immobilized reasonably well. That will be our protocol. I do not prefer to keep a Philadelphia collar in such because it's of no use. Maybe for transport purpose, yes, but when the patient is in the hospital, that we can do it at every place anywhere. It's a simple thing. We can put the gardener wheels and monitor with the tongs. Any difference of opinion with anyone? I mean, uh, as far as immobilization is concerned? No, not really. 
of it. And uh, uh, how many of us would uh, really like a CT scan on this patient as a, as a mandatory thing? Because we know that there is a bifacetal subluxation. We know that there is called uh, uh, injury, significant cord injury. So probably most of the things uh, uh, are already answered. So uh, do we feel that CT is going to give us additional few information and as a mandatory thing, it has to be done? Or it's... it's I think, Samir, CT should not be undervalued at all. You may have small spinous process fractures. You may have facet fractures at, at other levels. You may have this, uh, you know, sort of uh, small chip <coughs> somewhere. So all these things are picked up only on a CT. They are not picked up on an MRI. So yeah. we are assuming it's if a... You're sending the patient for MRI, you can just get the CT as well. So it's yes, very uh, easy for your operative planning. I, I agree with you because also the cervical canal, the AP and the lateral diameter also we can see well. At times because of the edema, it's difficult to assess and we see a very severe compression at times. And which on a CT, we can see the bone integrity. So if you can, it's definitely going to add the value for that particular piece. Agree. So, uh, and uh, once we have all the investigations with us, uh, what should what fit, what should be the approach? Anterior, posterior. I saw one Mir search uh, case just now in which he did a global fixation, anterior and posterior for a bifacetal subluxation. So uh, uh, again, uh, back to Mihir sir, I mean, uh, whether he will do global fixations for all these cases or it was one of decision which you took? See, most of the cases I do for these kind of acute dislocations are anterior because most of them do reduce. Yeah. If once you put them under anesthesia and you know you position with a particular sort of an extension angle, they do reduce. Lower dislocations are a little more difficult to reduce than a upper dislocations, mm -hmm. but they do reduce and otherwise... <coughs> So that you may have a sham reduction. That means you may not get a perfect reduction, but you can realign them to the maximum possible limit and you can still fix them. So mostly anterior, if required, you would uh, do a global fixation. I is just would answer? like to, yeah. I would like to ask all of you, what is the role of awake reduction and your experience? Awake. Yes, Samir. Awake reduction? Yeah. Sir, I, I, I have not tried it. Honestly, I am... I, I'm, uh, scared to do awake, awake reduction. You mean sir, day one uh, under CRM guided without uh, before without, yeah, without yeah. anesthesia. So it's a common practice in our institute. So uh, whenever the fracture dislocation comes uh, in cervical spine, we try to reduce that fracture dislocation. Okay. Uh, because uh, getting the patient directly on table is uh, it's very difficult uh, if we don't have a OT uh, uh, elective OT in that day. So we reduce uh, to uh, avoid uh, uh, late. Uh, uh, neglected, unreduced uh, dislocation, we reduce that on day one. We, we reduce that manually. Uh, patient is awake. Uh, we may add some analgesia, some relaxation and uh, do it under CM. We, we monitor the patient, give uh, him warning signs if he has some uh, uh, limb pain, uh, upper limb pain, uh, some tingling numbness or uh, uh, and vital has to be monitored uh, during this procedure. We do it commonly and till now none, uh, none of this patient has deteriorated uh, uh, Yet, but uh, still, uh, it, it's best thing is to go directly for the surgery. Yeah, because there used to be a lot of controversy. People used to say, you know, no, it's not good to do awake. But uh, recently, that Grant and Vakaro's paper, which they have enlightened and they spoke about, they can get very good and they, uh, uh, reduction. And they have not found a single neurological worsening in those cases which they have done awake. Right, right. So maybe there is a rational and uh, it's again an uh, institutional practice uh, where you are trained, where you are seen, but can be considered. Uh, yes, Mihir, anything, inputs from you? This this again brings out Sangeet's point again, is that will you attempt all these things before you have a CT or an MRI? So suppose you don't have a CT or an MRI in your institute and a bifacetal dislocation has to be transported elsewhere. Will you reduce it awake and transport it? Because the chances of neurological deficit are less, are you going to take that chance? That is question number one. And second, second is uh, this also undermines the kind of dis the rampant discussions that we have had of disc retropulsions causing deterioration. It never happens. Yeah. Yes, I agree, sir. <laughs> it, it, no, I think. Never I seen, think sir. 
when you get it you realize it happens otherwise it doesn't happen yeah so that's that's the whole issue nay nah, it's it's like you know if it is your relative and uh, you have something like this and uh, what they are saying if, if you are having some time where you are going to go for some distance of some travel you have to do for the mri or ct on x ray if it is a lower cervical you can attempt the reduction that will itself will give a better outcome when you go ahead with the surgery rather than wasting time that's what the paper of bakaro talks about okay uh, another question from me to uh, meher sir and uh, shaila sir if the and dheerat sir uh, if the patient is in neurogenic shock once he comes to you he has come to you after 24 hours from somewhere he is hypotensive he is bradycardic would you wait put him on tongs and uh, wait for the patient to settle or you have the kinds of setup where you can take the patient immediately also but would you wait when if the patient is in neurogenic shock see if the patient is vitally unstable you have to have your intensivist and your medical personnel commenting on it so really it becomes a team approach when the patient is medically unstable but okay. most of these patients have low bp and you can push in fluids to get their bp up that's actually yeah. wrong so yeah. they are yes. a yes. potential side they are a little on the bradycardic side yes the timing of surgery in the first few days versus the timing of surgery after the first one week is a matter of debate but nowadays i think people want to reduce this as early as possible yeah, but i i echo with what uh, meera said uh, absolutely so so uh, to be specific uh, regarding uh, hemanshu's uh, question so i will i will uh, avoid going for surgery if patient is vitally unstable because uh, mainly it will be a spinal cord uh, trauma uh, which has caused uh, this injury so i will uh, hesitate to go intervene at that time yeah what normally we say there is always a first hit and again you are going to do yes. a second hit chance yes. of worsening are very high and i also don't want me myself to be blame uh, for yeah, yeah yeah let the patient be medically stable and then we can plan for a second interval a, because this is the because most of the patients who come to you after 24 hours or they are bradycardic they are hypotensive so for the orthopedic <coughs> surgeon that has to be the message yeah 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 life comes first right yeah. Yeah. so in in this case we just did an anterior on him and uh, we could reduce him anteriorly and uh, uh, i am not a big fan of kgs i usually tend to uh, push in tricortical iliac grafts we could uh, we could reduce him nicely and uh, this was the end result well done surgery samit just yeah. one question if there is a yeah. dural tear it's not because of you because of the injury how will you manage it's a great uh, type 2 yes uh, usually sir uh, pack it with gel foam put a drain and come out sir no, nothing nothing special in cervical spine sir i mean there is no way of approaching it anteriorly okay but if you see the csf is coming yeah. it's because of the injury and it is flowing you put yeah. gel foam surgery cell and uh, it sealed off and uh, on the next day it starts leaking out uh, sir usually drain takes it over i mean i put uh, put my drain and keep it for 7 to 10 days before okay. i pull pull out so if in in case the drain is not working sir then like maybe uh, manipulation of drain maybe increasing the pressure Okay. so far i have been lucky enough that uh, drain has always worked and uh, once the csf diverticula is in place i keep it for at least 7 days before i pull it out okay. sir second one is that when when there is a lumbar spine a dural tear we keep the patient head low so what okay. about cervical cervical spine will you keep the patient head high or rather prefer sir correct so i i think uh, we have some experience with this we prefer to keep the patient's head high and in doubt Uh, better to be safer and do a subarachnoid lumbar drain divert that so that you know it starts healing any other inputs meher dheeraj uh, so just to add whenever possible just suture it uh, if you are doing a corpectomy you can manage to suture it suture it uh, i don't absolutely no no for us uh, gel foam uh, uh, for in a case of dural tear instead i feel they they uh, they, they are the, the most uh, 
are notorious to cause the future problem because they don't allow fibrous tissue to form at that region, uh, that area. It is becoming very interesting. Let's hear from me here. Yes, so completely no no for gel form, but uh, 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 a fat or a muscle uh, muscle tissue over that uh, uh, with a, a, a AV, AV seal or a surgery seal glue uh, should uh, do the job. Yes, me here. You are asking the person who is most unlikely with dural tests. I have seen all sorts of dirty complications with dural tests, so I'm extremely scared. Yeah. So, <laughs> so I think I think uh, if you have a dural tear, luckily from an anterior wound, uh, because the patient is lying supine, usually the gravity is pushing the CSF behind. So anterior wounds usually do not cause a problem. Usually, but you have to be extremely unlucky, like me, to for them to form a meaningful seal there. But usually a divert, what Shailesh said, you just give them a little head high, you just divert. If I don't put lumbar drains, but you just divert the CSF and you pack it with Duragen, you pack it with Dural Glue, you close it, you do whatever it is to stop it there itself. Otherwise, you have to be unlucky like me and then you have all sorts of problems. Perfect. We'll go to the next case. Thank we are you. running short of time, Samir. Yeah. So now I will rush through the cases. Shailesh. One yes, question. <clears throat> now, can you go back to the last X-ray? Yeah. How is the preparation of the disc different from a degenerated disc? Now, in a trauma, uh, uh, do you aggressively curate out the disc and the disc material so that there is a good fusion? Ultimately, the aim is fusion. Yes, sir. Okay. Against like a fusion in a trauma and a fusion in a degenerated disc or a... a, a how how the two surgeries are different? Yes, sir. Uh, can I answer this? Yes. Uh, sir, in degenerative, you have to do a lot of preparation for taking out the disc because a uh, lot of wear and tear and all these things have happened. In this, normally they are young people and the discs are reasonably less uh, dehydrated. You can uh, just scoop the disc and they come out very easily or uh, and... When there is an injury and translation, it becomes very easy. When you distract, you, it doesn't take much time. But it's important to do a good end plate preparation. At times, you can see a teardrop and you have to do a complete teardrop clearance also in this. You know, a beaking of uh, some, some of the wedge vertebrae. You have to go completely so that your graft can place well. So it's, it's mandatory for having a very good interbody uh, clearance and uh, the... Uh, cage will or the graft will sit well. So you mean to say the intact end plate has to be equally curated like other normal degenerated? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It is must. Can I go ahead? Yes, me. So now uh, going to the next case, a 24, uh, 25 year old lady who had a slip from two wheeler had severe neck pain and left upper limb pain, but there was no motor deficit, no comorbidities and vitals were stable. This was the picture. I'll quickly, so we can see that there is a C4 or C5 subluxation. Seems like a unilateral uh, facetal dislocation. Yeah, C5-6. Yeah, C5-6. And uh, though the Cord seemed, seemed to be fairly compromised. There was no long fractions and no deficits in this patient. That's the uh, CT which was done just to see the uh, injury. And uh, on the left side, we can make out that there was this C5 which jumped over C6. Classical push. This is a sign of push. Classical, yeah. Again, uh, SLIC scale, she was uh, scoring 7, so definitely surgical. So, should I just go ahead and uh, 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 start showing the results and someone can stop me if they want some clarification? Yeah, or? I think, yes, yeah, you can go ahead. Himanju can summarize this case. Yeah. So, we did again an anterior on her. Uh, we could, uh, we were lucky enough uh, that we could reduce it anteriorly. And uh, again, with uh, a graft... Uh, Inter, uh, interbody grafting, tricortical ilia grafts, and a plate. Yeah, it's very nicely done. So. Yeah. The reduction, unilateral facets sometimes make it difficult for the reduction. Bilaterals are easier to reduce. So if they are really locked, you have to go posterior, excise the facet, and come anteriorly. You got the reduction, so it's good. Yeah. Uh, Himanshu, any uh, 
particular technique or any particular tips you can uh, share with us uh, to do these unifacetals? How do you reduce them anteriorly? Uh, no, nothing different from my side. It is exactly the same way you do it for posterior. You can reduce it with tongs preoperatively. Intraoperative, there is something called as a clover's maneuver. You can put diverting pins and you can just manipulate the pins. So yes. I find it very useful uh, reducing it intraoperatively. So clover maneuvers work. So if yeah. those are diverging pins, once you make them parallel, you have opened the facets posteriorly and you can just push the yes. dislocated facet. Yeah. So it becomes yeah, easy some, to reduce. Sometimes it is very scary. I mean, it just dislocates with the third. And yeah. feel that if it's an osteoporotic bone, while you are trying to manipulate your pins, it yeah. can just cut through. For young yeah. patients, it should not be a problem because the hold for the bone is pretty good. One quick question for anyone. Role of neuromonitoring in intact neurology when you are planning to operate. Normally, we don't think in trauma. Affordability. Which cases? <clears throat> in all? No, no. In, in uh, no neurology where you are planning to operate unstable spine, the role of neuromonitoring. Uh, suppose we are planning for a. Uh, so, it, so one thing I will say, it's best to have neuromonitoring for each and every case as a standard, even for a dissectomy uh, or whatever big surgery it is. Okay, but that that should be a gold standard, but it's pr not practical for us to do it in the present scenario. Uh, for to answer your question is a practical what we do. Suppose we have to do an anterior reconstruction, a revision surgery, a complex uh, uh, long uh, surgery, we were called handling uh, is at uh, risk. So in that case, we will definitely go ahead for a neuromonitoring. Neuromonitoring uh, in case of uh, uh, incomplete neurology or a normal neurology, but in case of uh, no, non-functional power or no or complete cord injury, no neuromonitoring at all. Mm -hmm. Whenever possible, do it. Yes, yes. Yeah, why not? It is it is a norm. Why not yes, do it? Yes, why not? Yeah. So if, if it is uh, no deficit, we can definitely add up. It can add up value neuromonitoring. Okay. Yes, quick rapid fire and then we proceed with uh, Dheeraj's cases. <laughs> so another 40-year-old male, asymptomatic, uh, uh, absolutely asymptomatic before injury. Uh, he had no long, long track sets before injury. I mean, I'm just repeating it. He was under the influence of alcohol. He fell from a cycle and he uh, he became completely quadriplegic post uh, injury. No major comorbid conditions, uh, no other associated injury. And on, after admission, during admission, he was stable, but uh, he quickly started uh, desaturating. Initially, we felt that uh, it was under the influence of alcohol intoxication, but uh, we realized that he was desaturation uh, on admission. This is his MRI, classical CSM kind of injury. The reason why I put him uh, here is because uh, we happened to do a, a CT as well and we could see that there were a few fractures. So this was like a whiplash on a, a myelomalacic cord. And um, uh, this is just, uh, this case I did, I was not sure whether I should be putting this on, but this is just for us to be aware that uh, yes, uh, uh, classically looking, CSM with myelomalacic cord or whiplash, they can have few fractures and uh, sometimes even the management, uh, which uh, we usually tend to do just a posterior laminectomies for them, they can change because of uh, CT scan. So, uh, I mean, Dr. Mihir did say that it's mandatory to get it done and uh, I would uh, personally agree with him that uh, we should get CAT scan for all our cases. So, uh, he didn't give us much time. I mean, he was on ventilator for 7 to 10 days and after that, uh, the uh, relatives were not willing for us to uh, do surgery. Anyways, the prognosis was not very good. So, he uh, he kind of... Uh, Great lessons, his, yeah. yeah. Great lessons learned. Samir, thank you. Wonderful cases. We'll, uh, in view of time, we would like to go ahead with Dr. Dheeraj's uh, thoracolumbar cases. Okay. Over to you, Dheeraj. And if we get time, we'll go uh, come back to your cases, Samir. Uh, how many cases I am allowed to present? No, at least two cases. Let's see how the time because we are at yes. So I am going quickly. Uh, I have kept only selected uh, cases. So this was a uh, case which presented delayed to us uh, after the failure of extension. He was a 44 years old male already operated for paraparesis and presented with paraparesis to us and urinary incontinency. He had a history of fall 10 years before the surgery was done at that time. He had a history of fall from height. Uh, and with uh, you know, neurology and sphincter involvement. Okay, he was having non-functional power of uh, in lower limb. So this was the presentation uh, what we have during that time. Any comments uh, on this X-rays? 
something like it looks like day one failure yes yeah. yes perfect so so how you like to manage just the such fractures uh, on day one what what you have plan uh, how your plan differ from this and how to avoid such complications so do you have the pre operative x ray dhiraj so i i don't have that but you can uh, even with this present scenario you can uh, have a idea what what it was uh, okay can you just please go back to the first slide so this was the first slide this was the no no the history okay wait yeah 44 paraplegic okay so is paraplegic non functional power urinary incontinence so i think is having neuro i think this was a question which was uh, put uh, by sir uh, 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 about half an hour back high loaded fractures which are fixed by a single screw above and a single screw below yes. are not a very stable construct plus you have an anterior and middle column failure which in itself is a loss of structural integrity yeah. so the bio the biomechanical principles of fixations have not been followed so uh this was this had a high chance it does not always fail but this has a high chance had a high chance of failure right so, perfect or just going to put one screw in one above second. and one screw sorry near one second if you have to improve the fixation on day one what you would have added yeah. apart from the same construct what you would have added the anterior a screw in the middle a screw in the middle fracture and then you will have to study the structural integrity of that burst fracture whether you need to add a cage from the side uh, uh it all depends upon how the fracture presents because if you see the inferior end plate of that middle bone is still intact so you could have had a little structural sort of support from there okay so so the reconstruction yes or no sir sorry anterior reconstruction required yes or no Um, um, if if feasible, always. Yes, right, right. Uh, how many level above? How many level below, sir? At least two levels above, two levels below. You add add a screw in the fracture segment for right. whatever it is worth. Right, right. Perfect. Uh, Perfect. Mir, Mir, we are not clear. <clears throat> yes. Now, uh, you said uh, a longer construct was needed because otherwise this is a day one failure. So in that longer construct, do you have to do a anterior fusion as well? Or put the anterior cage as well to make it no no stable. If you don't want to do an aggressive anterior reconstruction, you will have to fix this long and put a screw in the fracture vertebra with the hope that that anterior defect heals. But that judgment should be that the defect should not be a very big one, which is going to keep adding a stress to your posterior construct. So whenever you want to go long, even then you have to ass assess your anterior stability. at the same time if you want to go short then it is a must that you have to assess your anterior stability a global fusion yes global so but usually for a short for fracture or uh, in the dorsal lumbar spine two level down just to preserve the motion three level up to get a better encourage posteriorly and sir anterior reconstruction depends upon the combination and uh, amount of body uh, uh, loss okay so if it is more than half body or anterior reconstruction is advisable especially in uh, uh, junction levels if there is a good body uh, contact in spite having the fracture and it is likely to heal uh, may, may we may skip uh, anterior reconstruction also when possible uh, the screw in the fractured body a small size also can be okay yes. for 5.5 exactly. index screws the it's index screws going to provide you maximum screw. stability that's one and the contour of the rod this is one important thing you know at times we have seen the failure because of the inappropriate contouring also yes perfect shailesh this yes. specially happens especially in osteoporotic patients uh, where we have not contoured the proximal parts uh, special so it is like likely to plow out uh, in future uh, after uh, follow in follow ups yeah himanshu you were adding something Yeah, yeah, I was adding the same thing, sir. The index screw, that is the screw. If your pedicles are intact, if you are able to put two index screws in the fractured vertebra, it is going to give you unbelievable stability. So, as far as possible, try to get. If you are putting a short fixation, the index screw is mandatory. If you are not able to get the index screw, then you have to go above and below again. So, for short, it has to be three out of three, all three vertebrae. Great. So, this was the CTs. There was a non-union at the fracture site. the fragment haven't healed yet and there is a uh, screw cut out broken rod and screws so this was a mri what any any chance you want to take for the neurology part after 10 it's, it's a 10 year old injury and it's yeah. long standing yeah neurology we have to be very guarded to tell the patient that he will improve or he will be the same or he will probably worsen so, 
true so that's that's very subjective when we talk about but if rationally if you think if you can really take out that anterior uh, compression i don't know how much that long standing uh, neurology will improve true true <clears throat> So we have done this. We have gone uh, uh, all posterior uh, long uh, construct uh, and enter reconstruction from posterior side only. We have taken out that body uh, 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 which was uh, comminuted. We have packed anterior into the cage as well as within the cage itself uh, and fused posteriorly as well. So there was some fibrosis uh, because of some, uh, previous dural tear. There was it was a fibrous heel, but it there was no leak uh, as such. Uh, we are lucky uh, in one year post op the patient sphincter improved uh, even the neurology improved so he can walk uh, with the help of a uh, walker and the neurologic pain what he was what uh, was bothering the patient has uh, reduced significantly so there is a article supporting uh, to late uh, 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 late surgeries in delayed fractures by uh, bolman it's a landmark article okay so he recommended anterior decompression in thoracolumbar fracture and which can provide favorable results for patient with late pain and paralysis as well so paralysis in along with sphincter involvement as well and 93% of uh, time uh, they have shown uh, the especially there will be a, a, a reduced neurogenic pain and more than half of the patient uh, with uh, incomplete injuries which was a, a, a scenario in our patient as well it uh, improves uh, most of the time thank you uh, can i can i sir, add sir. uh i think i think uh, uh, you quoted the bolman article i think uh, what they mean by late fractures is 3 to 6 months it is not it is not 10 years right. so you have been extremely you have been extremely lucky to get a neurological recovery here yeah. uh, to answer silesh's or your question itself you can have actually worsening of neurology when you are trying to dissect those adhesions anteriorly from behind okay so, you have to have certain principles you may you may require your ultrasonic saw you may have to leave a sliver of bone attached to your dura in front so basically the aim is not to decompress completely it is to sort of decompress relatively and to get a good alignment that right. was the aim aim of this surgery right not to effect the neurological right. Right. so so the uh, uh, the anterior part was relatively virgin uh, after trauma it has never been uh, tackled there by the previous surgeon so the dissection the, uh, there was no adhesion as such uh, anteriorly no. so, you are you are, you are I, i i think you are really lucky up to one year yes we can consider it as a late uh, but if it is more than two years the demyelination is normally occurred and uh, it normally wouldn't come back but you have to be extremely lucky in such situations so because the myoneural junctions are degenerative after one and a half years you know we we see so many patients come into the clinic who have complete deficit and there is a compression will they improve there are so many patients late onset coming and they have so complete, i i won't enter in a complete core injury but in incomplete core injury i will always take a chance uh, shailesh yes Uh, my question is now uh, dheeraj case was a incomplete paraplegia uh, for those who are presenting with complete paraplegia say they are coming within one year uh, is it worth exploring them if they are stable enough because even if they recover like is the, at this level say 1 2 3 even if they recover by one route uh, the rehabilitation or the kind of prosthesis uh, they would use would change uh, significantly sir uh, it's a very important and very uh, uh, practical question which comes to all of us uh, i feel if there is a significant deformity and compression which is causing him debilitating things managing disability every day lot of pain then it's worth considering decompression and stabilization giving a deformity correction if it's a it's there is no deformity and there is a compression and it's complete So five by five zero zero uh, by five power at one to two years, probably they will not improve. And if he is managing with wheelchair and a brace, probably I will not prefer to operate him at one year. Ah, uh, Silas, some of the patient they come so late and there is a uh, uncontrollable spasticity in the both lower limb. Yes, sir. In such a situation, uh, is there any role of surgery? Ah. Uh, 
sir uh, sir they always expect the, and i know that they are very emotional lot of pe people are very very poor and if we tell them that we do surgery we do stem cell they are very happy to get uh, anything done and get the surgery done but rationally it's it's a very very less chance for them to improve when there is a severe spasticity cord compression and very late after one year two year four years they come they come with a lot of references they want whatever you want to do we'll do it but i think 95 or 99% they will not improve sir in such situations i will personally not prefer to offer them any surgical role maybe rehabilitation is the right way and uh, i will guide them because it is our observation that majority of the patient they go door to door for a spine surgery and they want the burden to clear message that the the surgery is not going to offer him them right, anything right. more sir so just to add shailesh may also like to add that on that Uh, there are some experimental studies going on for this uh, complete uh, spinal cord injury in which right now they are putting spinal cord epidural stimulators and we are they are mobilizing this patient this was initially meant for pain analgesia in uh, paraplegic and they are they are in they are in further uh, research they have found that even the motor power, uh, power is getting uh, improved in complete uh, paraplegic so they are stimulating the uh, they are keeping a epidural patch uh, adhered to the cord especially at the lower dorsal spine and they are stimulating with the help of a, a machine which is uh, uh, kept in the inguinal region with the help of battery and uh, they have found some early results with the help of uh, uh, some supportive treatment they they patient managed to walk with support something like that no i think uh, dheeraj i will just add up and uh, something called as that pacemaker of the spine you know okay, what the right. pacemaker right. does to give that right. sa node and then give that right. stimulation the right. same right. thing at the level of injury below the cord injury they are trying to give stimulation yes, yes, yes. electrical stimulation pulses where but it is still in experimental yes, per, uh, uh, it's there is no concrete proof how many of them are improving but there is definitely a hope maybe it works and it will be a wonderful thing for all of us we'll go to the next case dheeraj in view of time uh, shailesh before he switches over my question to all of you now dheeraj case was a non union <clears throat> okay uh, now these he the patient may be painful uh, we don't discuss the neurology now he must be painful or he must be having difficulty in shifting from bed to wheelchair or moving or walking with the walker so a fuse, fusing and realignment how significantly it changes the activities of daily living in such patients we don't discuss the neurology part sir it definitely improves the mobility in wheelchair if if you give them a better sagittal balance upper body pectorals arms deltoid shoulder he is managing well and he has a good back he will be definitely better for mobility also yes sir sir just to add to your question uh, i basically have not done this surgery for the neurology part i was not expecting any neurological improvement in this patient it was mainly done for his back pain there was there was mobility and yeah, yeah. he was not able to sit on wheelchair second thing he was also worried about the neurologic pain He, we, what he had in lower limb he was just having severe kind of pain in lower limbs and which i have never promised to improve uh, uh, after surgery and just luckily it also got better and of god and of god bonus can i can i add something and uh, before that how painful are these non unions that is what i want so i i ek minute ek minute Sang sangeet why are we calling it a non union I, it was united very well the last no no the ct was kind of a heavy vertebra excision surgery no 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 it wasn't a non union it was yeah. see the ct yeah here the axial on it the right hand corner which one the right corner no this is just one part of the ct you are not seeing the whole gamut if you see the other area it looks quite stable so yeah, what, it's a united I, one what i'm trying to tell you is that i think it's non union i think it's watch non what what dheeraj got was like the cherry on the cake the whole cake did not bother him because the whole indication of this surgery was patient complaint of some pain when he could not sit on a wheelchair now that pain could be a broken implant you understand we have not we have not really gone through why this patient had pain this patient did not have pain of non union because this implant had broken probably 2 years back You uh, uh, so you will also agree implant breaks uh, because of failure to unite and to take the load or union happens before that that goes with orthopedic principle everywhere sir no no so but broken is, implant failure to unite maybe, uh, maybe yes dheeraj maybe yes it's not united therefore it is 
coming out. So maybe non-union also can be a word, can be you know, ki allied along with. So basically, not, yeah. Basically, it's a, it's all. Everything is wrong in, in if at all. It's not one thing. Uh, Mir, Mir, can you can you continue? What yeah. you were telling? Basically, the whole aim, what Dheeraj thought about this surgery was realignment. That means he gave him a better spinal alignment. Everything after that was an added benefit. That could not have been predicted. Whether the radicular pain came down, whether the neurology improved, whether his function improved could not have been guaranteed before the surgery. You did the surgery for deformity and suspected non-union. Like we do all kyphotic deformities. Yeah. And rehabilitation. Yeah, and rehab. That's all. Yeah. So this is a case two. Shall I, shall I proceed? Yeah, please. Yeah. So this is a case two. Uh, the thoracolumbar fracture dislocation in a young girl. She is depressed. She has fallen from a height. She has uh, attempted a suicide. She has fallen from a, 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 a second floor of jump from a second floor height. She presented with us uh, in incomplete neurology, non functional power. Grade 2 and low power in uh, uh, lower limbs uh, below the knee. Uh, and uh, this was the MRI. There was a PLC injury. There was a, a, a burst fracture of the upper end plate and a fragment compressing the cord. There was some kyphosis component as well. So, yeah. So, you want to, anyone to want to decide the management? Mir, sir, what do you want to do in this case? So, basically, I, I typically remove uh, the upper third of the body with the retro pulse fragment like this. Yes. I put yes. a, a short cage there and two level above, two level below and if possible a screw in the index. So okay. one, one level above depending upon how strong the bone is. If she's Where there, you will put the cage here? Here. This this whole area comes off. No, the, it's only posterior and how you will place the cage there? What yes. size cage you will put there? It is a disc, disc with the bone complex. You can, you can easily when it opens up, Shailesh. When it opens up, okay, it creates a gap, and that gap can be fixed with a cage. But will you go and middle column and then put the cage, or you'll be at the posterior middle column? No, no, no right, right in the uh, anterior third and the middle third. I showed one case like that. No? I think he will just prepare the disc space. I, I suppose. Yeah, okay. They, you prepare the do a dissectomy just like a tea leaf cage. You will put a but you will prefer to put a. Okay. Machine. Okay. Yeah. So this was a small construct done by a surgeon. He has put the uh, screw what we all love to put uh, one level up and down fixation. Any comments on this? See, uh, uh, well, you have kept two mobile discs now. It appears to be stable. It's the question of whether it's going to withstand. That's the whole issue. Okay. So, what, what might be the problem or what, what should, uh, uh, can this patient sustain this or uh, there should be a problem? Uh, and so if it all depends upon whether the proximal column topples over the distal column now. That, that I think, yeah, I think he has done a well done surgery, but looking at the instability, he has not fused it. There is no posterior lateral fusion seen on x ray in EP okay. or lateral anywhere. Do you feel fusion is a problem? Probably, yes. Okay, okay. So, uh, how long this surgery should uh, survive? If fusion is a problem? No, it can, see, it can survive. See, what I'm trying to tell yeah. you, uh, Dheeraj, yeah. no construct which you can predict right from the beginning. The most horrible yeah. looking constructs can survive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. True, true, true. Question is, are the biomechanical principles followed or not? In this, right. case, they are not. Okay, right. That is what we are commenting about. Yes. yes. So, this, so, so, what I wanted to add, uh, the fusion isn't a problem. The construct isn't a st stable construct. That's what I wanted to add. So the st I think the stable construct wasn't stable. Uh, it uh, just slipped uh, from the screw. The rod slipped from the screw, and there was further worsening of kyphosis and some further deterioration of neurology. So there was some component of uh, toe movements uh, present. So this was done uh, within a week. Uh, this toppled up. Any comments at present? I think this needs a complete go now. It needs, right. yeah. It needs a kyphosis correction. It needs a long segment above and right, below. Right. Uh, Sangeet sir, just what you mentioned uh, when you need an enter reconstruction, I just want to add. You can see the frac fracture site, which is open anteriorly, and such a big void anteriorly can't be kept uh, without enter reconstruction. So it is likely to put strain on the construct, oh, and sure. some of the other way the implant may give away. 
uh, on the bone may give away. So something so Stelich, like is likely to happen. Stelich is also point, pointing the same thing here. The right. aim is a good fusion. Yes. Okay. So uh, I am uh, mentioning about the anterior fusion reconstruction. Yes, yes. So even that is inadequate. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Sir, yes. Sir. So the, we have done. Uh, uh, we have further extended the fusion uh, one level up. We have again revised the screw. Uh, other screw was not uh, uh, done. Uh, we have packed entirely with a lot of uh, graft, and uh, we were lucky to get everything okay with this construct. And Very she has nice. done well. She, she has complete uh, recovery in neurology, and she was uh, walking without support. Um, <clears throat> Dheeraj, yeah. here, why did you remove that important screw, which gives a stability to that? Uh, so already, already, sir, it has been cut out, uh, okay. or it was loosened uh, at that time, and I was I was not able to get extra anchorage in the fracture uh, uh, vertebra. If I would have, I would have allowed to add that. So it, it will not make any difference since you have extended the construct. Uh, it's a longer you can construct. say that uh, it it pro it would have provided extra anchorage, and uh, it was an important anchorage which is required in such fractures. Sir. Yeah, but I, I was not able to put it. Dheeraj, sir, can I, can I just? Uh, uh, add uh, now. Um, see, you have four screws below. Why did you stop at three screws above? You could put you could put six screws above, no? Yeah, I could have. I could have because because was, you remember last time you mentioned you should go three above and two yeah. below. Yes, 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 agree, sir. So basically, it is proximally dorsal spine me jao because that right. is bigger liver arm. Right. That liver arm needs to be controlled because the whole right. upper body is going to so, topple on so, your lower body. Maybe my understanding at this time maybe uh, may was not up to the mark. I I was lucky this time. But if uh, it it would have been uh, given to me right now, I would have. It goes up to detail. Yeah. Actually, yeah, actually, actually understanding, understanding is very good. You fused very well anteriorly. Well done, sir. Very nice level up also definitely. Dheeraj. Nice cases and lot of uh, learnings from this Dheeraj. Uh, yeah. If you have time, we would like to proceed with uh, Dr. Himanshu. Yes. Right. Dheeraj, Dheeraj. Sir, sir. Dheeraj, you show CT scan. CT scan XJL image. Uh, ah, they, they, uh, they, go sir. back. Ah, there is a small speculis there on the posteriorly place. Okay. Is there any concern about this? Sir, Somebody. because these young patients are there. Very good point. Sir, this young patient, less than 40% or less than 50% of canal compromise with posterior decompression in a young patient is likely to remodel in long term, sir. So we don't you want to repose it on from the posterior aspect. How will you do it? Yeah. So in that case, if, if you try to remove that, we can attempt to remove that, sir. But it was a revision surgery, hence we have avoided that. But even you punching that uh, inside the disc further is also okay, sir. Gadi uh, gone, sir. Yes, sir. If you see the AP view. Probably it is on the outer side of yeah, the yeah, body. Yeah. It is not uh, behind the dura. Actual. What you are presuming? Okay. That may be there. <clears throat> uh, Dheeraj, last question. And to both all of you, the rule that three above and two below. Uh, now here, your lesion was at L3. Uh, L2. Yes. L no, L3. 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 Yes. Now, the rule would be same if it is a dorsal lumbar junction, L1 or D12. Uh, yes, sir. Prefer, preferably we like we most of us uh, try to preserve the segment lower down. Hence, we usually consider two level down. Okay. And, and uh, going above up to three level for extra encourage uh, uh, is so, uh, found satisfactory. What Mir was asking sir. was uh, was it intentional to keep one mobile segment in your construct? Yes, sir, I always I always like to uh, preserve the motion, uh, and I, I always avoid going below L four. So in such cases, I try to take extra encouragements. If I am not happy with the uh, fixation lower down, I take sublaminar wire uh, extra encouragements. No, no, no. Mihir was asking one level above, three levels above. So that would have involved the dorsal lumbar junction. Yes, sir, I, I would have loved to do this. If if this this case was given to me right now, in the present scenario, I would have gone three level above, two level down, sir. Okay, perfect. Good, good, good cases, Dheeraj. Excellent and a lot of learnings out of it. I would request uh, Dr. Himan Chukulkarni. Please proceed. Okay, yeah. And as thoracolumbar spine fractures are most common, this is what we are focusing more today. And Himanchu is going to 
show us cases about thoracolumbar sir sir yes sir yes, yes, you must introduce this young man because you have you have trusted it and you want it to inspire him yes for a webinar so you must uh, where he is working and uh, uh, dr himanchu kulkarni is uh, uh, upcoming and uh, spine surgeon and last 3 years he is practicing at sangli and kolapur region he is uh, trained uh, extensively in uh, spine surgery at uh, sanjeeti hospital and in germany also he has done couple of eo spine and shon clinic fellowships and currently he is in birmingham pursuing advanced fellowship uh, for a short period uh, and uh, this is what himanchu uh, i know and he is a very uh, knowledgeable uh, and scientific spine surgeon thank you sir continue himanchu yeah <clears throat> so we are already one and a half hour uh, one hour 45 minutes late so i'll just rush through the, the cases i have kept it very simple thoracolumbar fractures because we are uh, presenting for the orthopedic group so this is the case 28 year old male uh, history of fall from three two days ago referred to me after two days of the injury so this is the neurology upper limb neurology is absolutely fine lower limb the, the power is grade zero in all myotomes from l2 to s1 Uh, when the patient came to me, the catheter was up, uh, already in situ. Anal tone was nil. Bulbo cavernous reflex absent. Complete loss of sensation below the umbilicus. That is D10 dermatome. From D10 dermatome down, it was absolutely uh, no sensations. So it is Asia A kind of injury. It's a complete injury. So this is the radiology. You can see the fracture here. This is D10 11 fracture dislocation. So this, this is a very bad injury to have. in mri you can see once again d10 in all fracture dislocation there is a very massive cord hematoma which you can see there these are the actual cuts okay so this is the important one this is the ct cut you can see the fracture dislocation there is a overriding of d11 over the d10 body so in the axial cuts there are two skies in one the two suns in one sky this is what they call it so there are two vertebral bodies which you, which you can see lying Uh, ahead of each other in the axial cut so this is complete overriding of d10 over d11 so this is a type ao type c injury neurology n for complete uh, spinal cord injury telex score is 8 and obviously whatever the telex score is here the neurology is absolutely gone so you have to operate it so the difficult thing here is to get the reduction because this is a very high velocity injury and uh, the important structure important thing is while you are trying to reduce it you are very close to the aorta so if you do very violent reductions you can actually uh, injure the major vessels which are lying there anteriorly so gradual reduction and very slow approach is a very important thing uh, first of all you have to stabilize this pa these patients when they come to your casualty fortunately i didn't have to do that because i got a stable patient who was stabilized elsewhere for two days and it got referred to me So this is how you can see when I opened it, it is absolutely overriding. So one spinous process is going up, and the other is horizontal. So this is the cranial end, and this is the caudal end. You can see there are there is sidewise translation also in the cranial and caudal thing. So how to reduce these fractures? This is the paper by my boss itself, uh, Dr. Hathgaukar sir. So this is very uh, interesting maneuver that you can do. You are it's called as a short parallel rod uh, reduction maneuver. so you are supposed to put two short rods above and two short rod below and you can do gradual traction and reduction so once again you have to be very careful while doing this because you can just tear up out the vessels anteriorly so you have to be very careful you have to inform your anesthetist that you are doing a reduction and the reduction has to be very slow and very gradual so you can to put put two parallel rods two rods above and two rods below and with the help of four uh, rod reducers or uh, rod holders you can do this reduction so this is a levering technique so this is what we got we got complete reduction once again we have discussed a lot since last one and a half hour these are highly unstable injuries again you are this is a dorsal lumbar junction kind of junction so this is a t10 11 injury so i have gone three above and three below so this is what we got it has been 6 months since i operated him there is no recovery of neurology i was not even expecting that but this is how you do it so these are the fractures which are uh, initially when they come to you you have to see if they are uh, uh, vitally stable if they are vitally stable then you have to uh, be very careful while reducing them intraoperatively uh, any comments yes mihir 
um, can I? Okay. So basically, see, um, uh, this is an excellent way of reducing. Now, the problem happens when that proximal dislocated vertebra has lytic pedicles. That means that you don't have control over that vertebra. Mm. This is this is an intact fracture dislocation. That means you have one block which has moved over the next block which has toppled over. You understand? So you could put screws everywhere. The problem happens when the vertebra which is dislocated does not have pedicles. You understand? So it is like a free floating fragment which goes in 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 front of the body, and then the next pedicle is the one above. Mm. You understand? So that is the time where you have to actually manually, you know, manually lever it out and get it back into position. But like I had already said, you have to be extremely careful of the mess. There's an extensive degloving. There's an extensive dural laceration. There's CSF floating mm. around. There's cord floating around. Now, one wise man said, when there is no cord, it is a compet. It is a carpenter's job. How you yeah. put two and two together because there's no cord there. It's a carpenter's job. So finally, you have to be wary of your complications. Getting these two pieces together is probably multiple ways. But when you have complications, these patients are going to die. So that is where the whole thing comes. So how did you assess your aorta? In the preoperative seed, MRI is the aorta was fine. So you assessed it or somebody else did it for you? No, no, my radiologist. <laughs> so we have had a aortic dissection because of this. We have had an esophageal rupture because of this. We had had a, a, a ileal rupture because of this. So you have to be extremely wary of these injuries when you try to reduce this because everything is gets blamed on you. Yeah. Later. Yeah, yeah. I think uh, it's a it's a very valid and important point what Mira said. But uh, when there is a du uh, pedicle which is devoid, you don't need to put anything there. You have to go a level above. Above, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. And you have to skip to that level and you have to go. I was very lucky to get wrong. We have a very yeah. large series of this kind of complex cases. No single major complication till date. Because it's a very safe technique. Problems happen when people try to do osteotomy or corpectomy and do the reduction. Yeah. That's the reason we have to use both sides, the cob to uh, rest the spine so that you have a backup hold and you have to go above, put small rods and hold it. It's gentle traction, exaggerating the displacement and reduction. It's, it's, it's going to be a very, very safe. Once you do it, you'll realize this is now accepted by AO and it's in the manual as a technique for this kind of devastating dislocations of spine. No, it yeah. is it is a very, very good way of reduction. But what I'm trying to tell you is that after you've done all the rest this, of the plethora. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is, it is, it is, it is, yeah, yeah. It is a very nice it, it can it, be a devastating thing. It is we have to be very, very careful. The vascular structures are just in front. Yeah, yeah. And what you say is also true. I was very lucky to get the pedic both yeah, pedicles yeah. in the adjoining vertebrae. So it was bigger. Otherwise, I would have had to go uh, one level above. And then the liver force reduces. Yeah. You understand? So that's... But anyway, complete reduction is not the aim. You can go yeah. as high as you want. You can go as long as you want and just fix it. No, but if the displacement is, you know, like a railroad, it's difficult to reduce and putting the rod, it becomes really no, messy and... Uh, but everything, everything fuses, you know, because yeah, yeah. Very, very See, yeah, yeah. you have to hold them for a long time. Okay. Perfect. Anything, Dheeraj? Yes, uh, so, just uh, this is a good, good manual. I would like to try in future for my cases too. What we use, we are being using in our, our scenario, we are putting a cob inside the disc, and uh, with the help of cobs, we are trying to align that. Okay, okay. so just leave it to the old, uh, proximal old, fragment. I only was worried uh, how to get the rotation with your uh, this technique. How to get the rotational uh, alignment to be correct? So you are putting holding it on both sides, now You can always okay. rotate it. So, uh, go back to the it. images, Ivan. You can just. Yeah. The... So there are four uh, rod holders there. So you can as well rotate it very easily. You just need a good assistant for that, because okay. somebody has to uh, handle one side and other guy has to handle opposite side. So just one basic need for this is a good assistant. Good. Good. Nice. Okay, in view of time, we'll go to the next case. Himanjali. Yeah, so I'll go to the next one. Uh, but it's a, it was a 66 year old male. He had chronic back pain issues. Uh, the area where I practice in Sangli, 
दिस इज अ व्हेरी कॉमन प्रॅक्टिस मसाज फ्रॉम टेन इयर ओल्ड ग्रँड सन दे कॉल इट तुडवून घेणे तुडवून घेणे इज वेर एव्हर द पेन इज बॅक पेन नेक पेन यू जस्ट टेल सम टॉडलर टू वॉक ओव्हर इट अँड जस्ट मसाज इट विथ द फीट सो तुडवून घेणे इट्स अ व्हेरी कॉमन प्रॅक्टिस आय हॅव सीन मेनी कॉम्प्लिकेशन ऑफ दॅट समथिंग फॅसिनेटिंग दॅट पीपल डू सो टेन इयर ओल्ड ग्रँड सन तुडवून घेणे ही गॉट अ मसाज फ्रॉम हिस फीट अँड ही हर्ड अ डिस्टिंग क्लिक इन द बॅक वाईल डुईंग दॅट so he had back pain and gradually he could walk for 15 days but during the 15 days the walking gradually reduced it got worse so when he presented to me after around 16 17 day after that tudun gene episode and the click which he heard while doing that so it was a incomplete neurology a grade 2 grade 3 power on both sides urinary hesitancy was there and lower limb hyperreflexia was present so this was the x ray picture kind of looks like d12 compression fractures you can very clearly see this is a ankylosing spondylitis it is a fused spine so this was mri sagittal cuts you can see there is cord edema at d12 you can very clearly see in the mid sagittal cut so there is something going on at d12 this this is a, a black shadow not very clear you can see in the axial cuts so now ct makes it very clear meer sir had shown such a case in his presentation initially so this is a very bad three column injury so this is a fracture in ankylosing spondylitis it is not a very classical andersons lesion andersons lesions are classically <coughs> disc lesions but they are sometimes vertebral lesions also but this was post traumatic so you can see this is a three column injury completely anterior to posterior this is a d12 fracture toxic toxic hmm? toxic injury toxic injury yeah so you can see uh, there is there was chronic movement for 15 to 20 days so when we opened it so you can see there is a small gap there so yeah. this was the amount of friction and amount of bone loss which was there you can very clearly see that in the ct right so what we did is three above and three below and obviously there had to be anterior column reconstruction here because there was a complete void at the vertebral body so what we did was uh, d9 to l3 posterior stabilization with anterior column reconstruction the fascinating thing is this is the post op x ray at 6 months you can see uh, there is a new vertebral body which is formed there yes. so there is absolute fantastic fusion this is like a new vertebral body which has been replaced there mm. so uh, the just the take home message for ankylosing spondylitis fractures is ankylosing spondylitis is basically a bone forming disease so you don't have to worry a lot about amount of fusion you'll get most important is Uh, you have to go 3 above and 3 below because it's a very long lever on so just to put in in a perspective it is like if you just go one above one below it is like putting a two hole plate for mid shaft femur fracture would you do that no if nobody f- uh, fuses fixes uh, mid shaft femur fractures with plate but just to give a perspective if you had to put a plate for mid shaft femur fracture it should at least be four above four below because it's a very long lever arm so these are two fused lever arms which are acting there so you have to go 3 above and 3 below though they look fused they are very porotic because there is a disuse atrophy in the bone so you have to be very careful there are no landmarks but you have to go 3 above 3 below so just splint it let it heal it is a bone forming disease if you construct your anterior column very fine then it is going to fuse very nicely you don't have to do anything about that the important thing is you have to splint them and let them heal okay just so go back to the x ray manju yes sir manju so i have to add yeah. uh, that that kid shouldn't be blamed for tudun gene I think yeah. tawa basla yeah, it's a common practice here. Is the right uh, word here? Yeah. So yeah. tawa basla. No, no, no. So it's already the spondylar discitis, the uh, lysis has already happened uh, anteriorly. Yeah, probably he just exaggerated. Doing, That's all. Maybe the click sound has been uh, obvious after the uh, child. After that, been, yeah. After, after that back. thing. I think very well done surgery, Imanju. Yes, yes, Something yes. called as spontaneous fusion is a word for ang spont. and yeah. it happens when you do a good fusion it happens and you get absolutely rock solid uh, reconstruction there Me- mehir sir yeah i want to ask mehir sir also on this uh, whether you like to do enter reconstruction in this because <laughs> when suppose i i want to i would have uh, asked this question 5 years before i would have said definitely yes because there is a huge lytic lesion and it has to be reconstructed but, but nowadays what we are doing only posteriorly this If, yeah, yeah. even with only posteriorly whatever big amount of lytic lesion they form the body as it is in a spond what we have been uh, i may show if you allow me i will show one of our case so the number so one body after lysis is completely reformed uh, only by posterior fusion 
so again it is just a long fixation that is required you don't need to go anteriorly so even when you do corrective osteotomies for ankylosing spondylitis you just mm. them. you don't fuse them anterior they mm. open up like this yeah. but you don't fuse them right you okay. himanshu i have two questions for you uh, mere yes, you want to you continue me here please yeah. after that i'll ask the thing is you have to be extremely careful opening canals in ankylosing spondylitis because there are very bad dural adhesions the dura is thinned out and you can have you know uh, when particularly if you have a dural tear in an ankylosing spondylitis what happens is that it becomes a flap and it sucks air and patients tend to develop a complication peculiarly called as pneumocele you have a, you have a uh, air gas shadow in the brain so you have to be very very careful trying to decompress ankylosing spondylitis because most of the times it is not required you are just stabilizing them <clears throat> himanshu you said it is not a classical andersons lesion uh, what do you mean by that the classical andersons lesions are usually discal lesions so these these are disco vertebral lesions uh, andersons lesion mentions the vertebral lesions also but you don't very commonly see those so the classical vertebral lesions are through the disc so these are and anderson lesion so okay. you can label this one also but it's not a classical one i think now if you see the post op x ray now yeah. your <laughs> cage is in the body yeah okay so i have put it in the bodies because if you can actually in the body yeah i have put it in the bodies because you can see here in the mid sagittal gland the superior disc and inferior disc end plates are intact sir the void is in body okay, so okay. this is a this is kind of a cage plasty This is a typical chance fracture, which is yeah. Gone. You could label it chance fracture, which is a better three-column transvertebral lesion. So the cage is put in the body only. It's a cage plasty. And in in ankylosing spondylitis, is you should not call it body and disc. It is always a chance fracture. So there is yeah, no chance fracture. Bone. It's all all bone. Yeah. So bone. now, if you analyze post seeing your post-op X-ray, yeah, the, the post-op X-ray where the new body has formed. that interbody cage has no role at all otherwise no, also it no role at all otherwise also it would have formed so now he is not going to do it <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> after seeing this kind of fusion i i will i won't do it next time so yeah. probably it's not needed it was uh, probably one of the first few angstwans i have operated this is second or third yeah. so i it I, it is always a fear you have a large void anteriorly just fill it something what if it fails so i i know now it doesn't fail so well done himanshu like what sir said for his previous with a infinite wisdom which i have got through this i won't do it next time probably himanshu no tutt tudun gene ha na yeah yeah thank you It's himanshu a for a wonderful idea. presentation uh, i think yeah. if you have time we'll have to go to the last presentation yeah Can, uh, uh, stop sharing your screen Uh, in other parts of maharashtra tudun ghene manje like as a child if you make a mistake and how father <laughs> tudun ghene from parents <laughs> that is that is tudun ghene <laughs> on on father's day <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that we have, everybody have a lot <clears throat> is my screen is seen yes yeah. yeah i am going with some uh, interesting cases because pediatric cases are not very common and uh, i think we will go rapid fire as we have really less time but we can always have uh, uh, our all experts uh, opinions about these cases the five year old boy neck pain inability to walk for two months history of fall details were not available gradual onset of weakness over two months difficulty to stand walk he was wheelchair bound and then suddenly patient at weakness in the lower limbs he uh, when uh, patient was seen it was around 2 months and uh, the power in the lower limbs was 0 uh, to 1 and upper extremity was around 3 to 4 and this is what the x ray was and this is what the ct scan was that fall led to these fractures and this is what was the compression
T1 or T2 with a deformity. Probably it was there and he had a fall which led to the dislocation. I would like to hear from you all. Mihir. It looks like an uh, old uh, kyphotic deformity with a superimposed stroma to me. Yes, Correct. Yes, yes. Correct. It's I, like already a deformity. Uh, there. Exactly. A kyphotic deformity to begin with. And uh, it looks like uh, because now he's deteriorating neurology, you plan a kyphosis correction. Uh, all from behind. First, that means you try to get around the cord and free it. Go three, four levels about two, three levels below and uh, do a column osteotomy and try to get it out under neuromonitoring. Implants? Implants, you have to start off, plan it on your CT scan, depends upon what kind of screws. Lower down, you will be able to put pedicle screws, upper screws, consa level, D1, D2. Yeah. So, see, maybe customize lateral mass or whatever above one pedicle which you can grab, few wires combined on the top and then you go down and put pedicle screws. Dheeraj? Yeah, I think uh, what sir like, rightly mentioned, it's uh, already a deformity is there over which uh, trauma has happened. So yeah, for T1, T2, I would like to take extra encourage. Uh, sorry. So I would like to take extra encourage. At, I would like to take uh, extra encourage over C7, T1. Uh, add la lateral masses and sublaminar wire. I would love to add that. And uh, lower down, you can go three to four level. Yes, Samir. Yeah, similar. I mean, uh, five year old. So any implants, any screws which we'll be putting will have very poor hold or uh, marginal hold. So uh, supplementing it with sublaminar wires probably is mandatory, irrespective of whatever hold we get. Burn fingers with a couple of cases. Uh, simil uh, Imagine similarly. You? I am uh, I am no, not very great at subliminal wires, so I'll try to depend on the amount of hold which I get in the screws. Uh, a subliminal wire SOS. Nilesh, I would like to uh, uh, add a, a post op hello hello uh, waste base. Okay. Yeah, yeah. that will help. Uh, oh, so I MRI also. And yeah, MRI. I showed you. Achha, okay. Severe compression at that level. Yeah. Yeah, so I think it's an osteotomy. You'll have to just use your best implants, plan it on a CT and just try to get a controlled correction. Don't try to overcorrect too much. And you can even uh, uh, sort of, you know, put a strut anteriorly from behind, put something, pack that because the anterior column tends to topple again because the posterior implants are weak. So you have to get in some sort of a strut in front, which will not allow your implants to get stressed. Otherwise, this is a recurrent deformity. The okay. implants will back off. As these are not very common cases I kept. Uh, can I just uh, scroll through now, Mir? Yeah, yeah, please. What we did. And uh, we did the uh, posterior surgery, all posterior. And uh, this is few years back. This is uh, the crushed field tongs. We exposed. It's important to always analyze the CT scans and the lateral mass because they start appearing at the age of 3-4 and if they are devoid, you will not get any purchase. You have to have your all the backup as all the uh, faculty uh, have mentioned us just now. And uh, if you don't keep all this backup, then you are going to have a big failure on table. A good exposure is important. Wide exposure, which will give us a absolute good anatomy of what you are going to do because they are very, very small pedicles, very small lateral masses. We, put, we were lucky to put three levels above and below and we did a PVCR, the posterior vertebral column resection surgery. And you can see this, this is a CM image and we were lucky to use a sham rod, go anterior, distract it, put a cage anteriorly at that level D1, D2, but that cage was slipping off. And this is what was happening. Then uh, we put a lot of graft at that place and we reconstructed with bilateral fixation. And this is what was the image. 
if you see the decompression was done complete decompression and it was packed at that d1 d2 level you can see the central laminectomy the facerectomy unilateral and three levels above and below and this is the child now it's nearly 5 years from the surgery he is improved in his lower limb function to grade 3 or something any comments well i i think i think it's a very well done surgery the only concern like all of us have is that these things crank shaft and they tend to topple and you need some sort of a strut anteriorly yeah way back way back about 15 years back i i presented a paper in uh, i think viroc or something where uh, we showed about me and chitish had about 32 cases of kyphosis below 5 years of age and we we called it a surgeon's nightmare or death because they can fail anywhere from 6 months to 2 yeah. years 3 years they just keep toppling yeah yeah now this is again an interesting case a 4 year old girl alleged history of fall on head while playing no deficit notic all is unifacetal dislocation and anterior lysthesis c4 or 5 Yes, Samir. She got a injury while falling. She yeah, fell. while well, she fell down. Yeah. This is the MRI. It shows anterior lysis C four or five, unilateral lock, and this is the CT. anyone samir himanshu well, uh, how old is the injury you said it's like 4 5 days old would uh, would like uh, uh, manipulation traction and uh, uh, close reduction in this case if possible uh, then put a collar or a vest and just leave her yes uh, shailesh i would like to do the same but since uh, it's already more than 72 hours so as per literature this fractures uh, the chances of reduction after 72 hours reduces more than 60% But still, I would like to uh, uh, go for a close reduction attempt at least under the GA and uh, get the uh, 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 displaced fracture uh, back to its place. If it's not, then I will open with the help of uh, uh, what you say, uh, uh, McDonald's. I will like to uh, reduce that, uh, putting that inside the fracture. I will uh, reduce that. I will put an implant uh, standby uh, if the facet is uh, fractured or there is instability component. I I may add a, a single level finger. Manju. Mir, so I think uh, there are two issues here. One is that whether you can reduce it either closed or open. That is one issue. And suppose you don't do anything, just put this child in a soft collar and allow this fracture to stabilize over a period of time. Most of these facets tend to fuse. It's already stabilized, sir. It's stable facets. There are there are lot of literatures on neglected torticollis because of unilateral fracture dislocations. and uh, in children where well, i think i think uh, we should go through that literature but neglected facet dislocations in children do not cause problems so uh, this fracture is inherently stable there is no neurology there is no chance of neurology you just have to protect it so if you can't reduce it the decision is whether you want to conserve it or whether you want to open the reduce conservatism is okay what will you do what is ideal so close reduce it i would be discussing with the parents whether they want an open reduction for this how many parents would actually opt for it no no because she was in significant pain see pain is because of an acute fracture reaction that pain Correct. down into 3 weeks and these patients tend to have a pain painless range of movement and that painless range of movement stays unilateral fracture dislocations never get complicated so that 
that is very well written in literature. The no, question no, no. is there are there are papers where they have worsened. There are so many papers of if you don't reduce. Why you want to go, uh, leave it like that only? Yeah, why you want to leave? It I is great to two listlessness. So the question, the no, no, no. It's growing it, child. It is never grade two listlessness. It is always grade one listlessness. Yeah, so let us you see here. Here you can see here. It's a little. So, the no, no. What I'm trying to tell you: unilateral facet dislocations, Shailesh. When when you have a in the absence of a facet fracture or in facet instability, the chances of it progressing to bilateral facet dislocation is practically negligible and these are isolated case reports that you are talking about no no agreeable i am yeah. not saying what? but look at it it is not that so what yeah. okay. if you can't do then it's okay but if you can why you, not give a best chance so the question is the question is if you don't get it closed are you going to open reduce it or not that is the debate i will i will sir i will open yes, sir, Dheeraj, I will go for open. Uh, As a surgeon, I will offer it to the patient. Uh, I will offer it to the parents. Surgeon says, do the uh, patient says, do what best you can do. Ah, uh, so then then open reduce. Okay, okay. What will be the choice of implant? No implant. Open reduce and protect it. Why do you want to put in an implant there? No, no. So there is a chance that uh, it won't no, uh, able to reduce, or there may be some uh, abnormal. So uh, after... you, are you willing? Yeah, to... these are very rare surgeries, and uh, they are not very are common. You want, they are... use, yeah. you want to use a segment in a eight-year-old girl? Sir, I am not keen to uh, fuse that. If it's coming, it's it's good. I will not fuse that. But if oh. if the, there is some part of fracture is there, which is not seen on the CT. Okay, if it's uh, looking to be unstable there, I have to take out some part of facet to reduce it uh, anatomically. In that case, I will keep uh, the fusion part. Uh, no, exactly. If you have to chop off some amount, then fuse it. Yeah. Uh, chop off some amount. No, so you may not have to chop off that amount. It may. Yeah, yeah. If, if needed. If needed, yeah. It is a four-day-old fracture in a child. Why do you want to chop off the facet? So, yeah, always, you are going to attend for a close one, does. If, yeah. you get the, if you don't get the reduction, that's what he's saying. Yeah. No, no, suppose yeah. you get if a you close get reduction, the, if at all. You got the, get a close reduction. Is it a chance that it will slip again? If you get a close reduction, there, yes, there is a chance. So that's what so we are going to assess on table. Primarily. See, there is a chance. It will. So you're talking about chance, which are very, very minuscules. Yeah, yeah. So that is what I'm trying to tell you. You are talking about that one two percent and generalizing a treatment plan. See, these these are the very rare cases which are uh, very poorly reported also, as they are not very commonly seen. I am telling you, there are bigger case reports on neglected unilateral facet dislocation where the patients have been asymptomatic rather than large series of facet dislocations which have been reduced. Sir, by facetal dislocation. There are no series. There are not many series. Like JPO also, there are no cases. You are not talk about. In the adults, yes, they are. They are also reported, sir. But that doesn't mean we will leave bilateral like that. Bilateral is a different issue, Diraj. Don't don't transgress. This is a unilateral facet dislocation. It is a benign etiology. It is not a bilateral facet dislocation, which is an unstable etiology. Okay, sir. Right, right. So yes. what what's your management plan, sir? Again, if you are close reducing a unilateral facet dislocation, it is an equal chance of re-slip. So that means that by theory, you are going to fuse every unilateral facet dislocations. Okay. So if you are open reducing any unilateral facet dislocation, why, why there is a less chance of slipping it again because there is a bony component which is intact. If it's getting into place, yeah. it's less likely to. Uh, what is the hindsight if you fix it? Yes. Shailesh, can yeah, you come? Yeah. What are the yeah. management options? So management options, uh, as uh, it's, a, it's becoming very interesting that we can uh, close reduce and uh, just keep it in a brace. We just accept it and see because if, whatever torti call is, as she grows, she may improve. That's also an uh, acceptable uh, norm because uh, uh, they uh, they may show improvement. If uh, the family is demanding, we can open reduce it. If you are not getting a close reduction, you can open reduce and you can either keep it. Which is not a good idea when you are opening. So better to stabilize. Implants can be very. If you see here, the lateral masses are very small. Your screw won't go there. So something like a wiring will be an option for this, just to keep it in hold and keep it in brace. Monitor her progress. 
and what is the incidence of redisplacement if you do, do a close reduction or if you do an open reduction sir uh, as it, it's it's not you know it is very poorly reported we have searched a lot of literature for this it's very poorly reported for a very small child because uh, you know okay, there are very very less cases which happen with such unilateral dislocations for them or uh, you know therefore i think uh, if you can manage if the patient's family is demanding you can definitely give a chance of best chance of doing a reduction in, and in situ fusion you can just put a simple wire posteriorly and mostly they will not have any issue at all and uh... Uh, untreated ones what are the long term manifestations uh, as they grow as a child grows what as are some the amount of some amount of uh, torticollis may remain that's the uh, hindsight otherwise they should be able to do most of the activities yes. and that that part may auto fuse sir that segment yeah, yeah, that will fuse yeah it, I, I was exactly going to put that so if you are trying to reintroduce it it will auto fuse as yeah. the child grows so this patient's family was a very demanding family they had already seen two three uh, surgeons uh, and they wanted uh, that has to be reduced and they belong to orthopedic surgeon if you see here the facet is completely sub uh, dislocated unilateral uh, on the first image i see there is a fragment there yeah a small fragment the fracture fragment there yeah and this is what the fracture is yes so it's a fracture uh, can you take the cursor and show shellish yes sir yeah. there is a very small fragment there i just go through so that we will we reduced it and just put the wire posteriorly it was quite tough to reduce we were thinking of sacrificing the facet but somehow after some time we were lucky with some amount of traction we were lucky to get it and this is nearly a 7 year follow up of this girl wonderful shailesh wonderful Good, good. Uh, do you think that the three D image, if you do a video or the um, graphic demonstration, that would have given a better uh, understanding of that lesion? This one, sir. Yes. Yeah. So if you see uh, the right side, it is showing a very good facet, and this is a reverse hamburger sign. You know, like a hamburger, you see, and when there is a dislocated facet, the reverse hamburger. I will just show you. what i'm trying to say the reverse hamburger sign the bun bun shape is towards each other like this if it's ulta placed against each other okay the curved surface will be uh, facing above and below now oh, that will be very easy yeah i'm just trying to search actual cuts sorry this or is like a hamburger what uh, we uh, burger sign and uh, reverse is where we are seeing <clears throat> what i just showed the convex surface will be touching each other yeah i'll just try to enlarge this image can you see it now sir well yeah is it seen dheeraj yes yes yeah okay should i proceed with the last quick case a rapid fire 
yes yes please again please. unusual case i'm just showing because a lot of cases like this are very interesting and intriguing for us you know ki management plan action plan what we should do and even literature is very poor on this 9 year old boy road traffic accident lost ball and bladder <clears throat> and this is what was his fracture which was reverse type 3 of roy kamil complete overriding what was the neurology bladder and bowel was completely involved bladder bowel involved yeah h2s3 very common with uh, these fractures no but this is h2s3 fracture no yes, s2 it is s2 3 so bladder bowel completely involved because of this when he was uh, presented bladder was involved because he couldn't pass urine he was at, uh, admitted at two places before he came to us he no, came to us in 7 days after 7 no, no. days sacral fractures presenting with retention is a very common phenomenon but it's Correct. a neurogenic thing at this level c23 it can Correct. be a partial involvement that means it cannot be a complete involvement of bladder and bowel Correct. it is below s2 the s2 roots have exited it is below the pedicle of s2 but still there is a possibility that this can contribute no it it can cause a partial thing very limited bladder but it cannot cause a significant bladder involvement but there is no other reason for it the sacral resections below s3 have better prognosis than sacral resections above s3 it is it is a very very proven thing in correct cancer surgeries for years now yeah 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 so s2 root has exited s1 root has exited the major contributors to bladders have exited so this cannot cause a complete bladder injury yes let us be very clear about it so i think i think he is painful he is catheterized we will have to study his bladder at a later note correct what will be your option conserve absolutely conserve allow this to fuse on its own you cannot do anything okay this alignment of the sacrum is not angulated it is a normal contour of the sacrum can you go back to your city mr see yeah. the, so the sacral canal is completely occupied by this uh, loptosis uh, how can we leave it alone can yeah because it, uh, the s2 fragment is in the canal but it is completely overriding sir yes, yes. No, no no it is not overriding it is overriding anteriorly secondly it will it will cause a, a very atypical fracture not like what is uh, described in roy kamil it's a posterior displacement here it is a anterior displacement yes. and superior overriding this is your s1 s2 ha this is your s3 yeah so this is where it is going to fuse the normal contour of your sacrum is going to remain intact all you have got to tackle is this bump which may cause a pressure impact on the skin later on no oh, it is it is protruding outwards me yes but the bump of the s2 it is not the s3 it is the bump of the s2 yeah so the neural neural tissues are uh, stretching over that bump no sir ah but that bump can be not addressed now no it is a chronic problem later neural elements have already exited the major one i give a chance later he is a young boy 9 years give whatever is best at right time please are you trying to tell me that you are going to reduce it and affect the bladder recovery in a fracture dislocation in a recovery it's 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 i, I it's, agree it's, that is that's the plan sir i will do it yes. yeah please do it oh no because at twice he was recatheterized when he came to us it was assessed by urologist are s1 s2 root exited at shailesh come on i do post traumatic bowel bladder we should intervene sir uh, shailesh can you go ahead what yeah yeah yeah, yeah. we we'll, because this is again a very uncommon and uh, scenario we are just discussing here we we reduced it we decompressed it and it was quite a challenge again to reduce this overrided two segment sacrum it looks only in lateral but it's very tough we had to completely wait for almost 15 to 20 minutes in this reduction position we had kept one of our fellows holding the body and giving a counter traction in this 
and after that we went ahead we decompressed it and we used the mini plates yes because nothing else was appropriate at this juncture and we were lucky to get complete reasonably complete reduction and fixation and this was the immediate post op within 2 to 3 months he recovered his bladder and now it is nearly 3 to 4 years he is completely normal now we we are planning to remove those plates good good excellent excellent shailesh and uh, i would just want to mention you i have uh, uh, seen two cases like this one in a adult one in a child and i have done the similar thing i have used the recon plate only great so shailesh yes sir it's a wonderful webinar now it is 2 and 1/2 hour and uh, let us see you again on 3rd july for degenerative spine workshop uh, this uh, course so find out some faculties and we will be there even dhiraj will be also be there so meher ji thank you very much for your excellent uh, comments and excellent uh, taking part in discussion sailesh himanshu sangeet ji samir and all executive body member those who are joined here so uh, i think uh, sailesh you have to promise me a next webinar on degenerative spine surgery and uh, you have liberty to choose all faculty members and of course our sangeet gawale and sandak sir will yes. be there as a panelist thank you very much thank you all for a great support and a wonderful webinar and a great interaction thank you once again enjoy the course thank you thank you, thank you all auto tv we can uh, stop transmission yeah sandak sir yeah yeah थर्ड जुलाई को डिजेनरेटिव स्पाइक ठीक है संगीत नोट इन योर डायरी यस सर चलो ठीक है सर ग्रुप टाक तुला बोलवा तीन जुलाई टाइम चीज तरी चलता प्रॉब्लम नहीं साढ़े दहा साढ़ा बारह Yes, yes. एक पर्यत संपाय यस सर परफेक्ट चला थैंक यू धन्यवाद थैंक यू सर थैंक यू सर यू कैन क्लोज दी ट्रांसमिशन थैंक यू सर स्टॉप रिकॉर्डिंग हम्म मैंने गप्पा मार दे अरे तू सोके सुनते रहता क्या किरण हां अरे तो मेरा टेक्निकल प्रॉब्लम है लैपटॉप का ये अरे तू इतना बड़ा प्रोफेसर आदमी तू यार ये स्पॉन्सर करा देना क्या रिकॉर्डिंग ने लैपटॉप रिकॉर्डिंग इज कंटिन्यूंग समबडी हैज टू स्टॉप द रिकॉर्डिंग और तो टीवी गाइस ऑटो टीवी स्टॉप द